Rachel, you're good, but stand to the side while a pretty mediocre guitar player handles things. <laughs> Do you know how to play? Here we go. <laughs> oh, she's asking if you, if you know what that is. I know a chord. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. This is our outro song. By the way, thanks so much for coming out. This has been awesome. You guys have been great. Thank you, Duke. University. Don't take a seat, it's time to leave, so go and pee or do what you please. Drink some tea or have some coffee or milk. Drink some wine or wear some silk. Just be comfy is all we're saying. Don't go around and start praying. Don't you Thank you, too. Drink till we puke. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Meet me outside and we'll drink till we puke. Thank you, too. Hello, my name is Amir Shmuel Blumenfeld, and I am a coy little Jew boy. I'm here to tell you there are only 25 tickets left to our show in Austin. The coy goy, Amir Shmumu in the house. Buy tickets to our Austin show. There are only 25 left. I actually don't have yeah. a mustache, so oh, that's not a Shalom! <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Amir Shmuel Blumenfoil, and I didn't get my first puke till I was 29, and I want you to come to our Austin show. What do you say, bud? Hey everybody, my name is Amir Shlomo Blomo, and if you buy the time, oh, you little prick, dude! It's easy to come up with a musical, because most of them are the same. All right, go ahead, come up with one. It's a uh, fucking... I'm not trying to, like, do it super quick. <laughs> Sorry, you said it's easy to come up with. A house where the garage is the mouth. So it's called House Mouth. It's the House easy... Mouth? So the first song... Obviously, this is, like, just the first stupid idea, so it, it won't be that good. Because the first song, you know, is, like, happy and cool, and it, like, introduces you to the premise of the musical. It, yeah. So, so it would it'd be like... Hey, hey, I'm a house. Garage is my mouth. Hi, hey, ho, he, hum, hum. And then, like, you'd There introduce... were, like, nine words in the whole song. <laughs> you're, That's... you're laughing at me, but you're wrong. <laughs> the you're the like... bad guy is multi-layered. That's a good thing for a bad guy to be, but you exactly. haven't thought of him yet. So he, like, works at a charity, which is kind of interesting for the bad guy. And you meet him. Who is the bad guy? It's the main character is a house the that clicker. has a garage for him. <laughs> the clicker. <laughs> and he works at a charity. <laughs> well, who's the love interest? This is so easy. It's a tree that lives next to the house. This, the, <laughs> go ahead. What's the song? The love song. Who is there? Who can it be? <laughs> it, and by and the way, that, you, sorry, is this you as the tree? <laughs> no, it's not me as the tree. It's me as the fucking moon. I, wait, you said it was about the house. That's how. The, that's your way into the story between the moon and the tree and the tree. Exactly so how is the right. clicker still the bad guy? <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> All right, go when ahead. You, All right. Who is eat? Eats the tree. Eats the me. Ooh, and I'm the moon. You think you could sing better than me, you piece of shit? All right, ready? <laughs> Sorry. The moon's like, in your sky, in your eye, and I'm the tree, and I'm the guy, and in your eye, it's a tree, it's a me. <laughs> the moon is also the tree? No. It sounded like the moon was the bad guy in that song. <laughs> the clicker's the bad guy. I, who plays the clicker? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's the dream casting role, and then there's the person who we're probably going to settle for. Let's hear both. James Earl Jones. Yep, and you settle for? My cousin. It's going to be in the fridge. I remember Don't my, uh, my cake email, where I like oh, my yeah. mom got me cake? <laughs> <laughs> my mom got or delivered cake to the old college humor office in New York, and I like put it in the fridge, and like you know, people help themselves. And then, <laughs> well, no, like, the weird thing is was you, it for your birthday or just yeah, in general? For my yeah. birthday. It was for your birthday, or I thought it was a Jewish holiday. Like, mm. yeah, maybe it was Jewish New Year. Um, and Amir wrote like a an all email saying like, "Hey, there's cake in the kitchen. Help yourselves. Happy <laughs> uh, Jewish New Year." 
And then, like, later that night, <laughs> the cake was gone. You wrote, you wrote back. Wait, yeah, can you pull it up? I don't know if I still, because I don't know if it was a Gmail. I think uh, it was. College humor. Because you did it again, like, recently, like, a year or two ago after we left. <laughs> <laughs> you responded to that thread? I, I responded basically, like, every four months for, like, <laughs> oh, wow, I do have it. September right, well, it was. What's it, can we read through this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, this is September thirtieth, two thousand eight, wow. which is nine years ago. Uh, in honor of the Jewish New Year, my mom sent me two cakes. I put the first one in the kitchen now. Obama wasn't even elected yet. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> don't make don't get me so excited thinking no. about that <laughs> time and place. Uh, in honor of the Jewish New Year, my mom sent me two cakes. I put the first one in the kitchen. P.S. Remember, Jews first. When we're done, the rest of you may have our crumbs. Uh, so that was the email saying everyone can have. That was cake. very 2008 humor. Too. Yeah, yeah, classic, classic. Uh, now I'm trying to find the responses because I think it was a different... Jeff, why don't you tell a joke while I look? I think right. I... Um, so the cake email um, was actually sent in January. I said, my mom sent me a cake for my birthday. Feel free to take a slice or two or three. And then... In January of what year? Uh, 2009. Got and it. then later that day I wrote... After Obama's yeah. inauguration. <laughs> yeah, Very it's nice. completely different. <laughs> hey guys, I don't know who sent the last email, but it was not me. I really, really needed the whole cake. <laughs> who, who ate some? It was a gift. I want to know who ate some of the cake because it was a gift and I need the whole cake. <laughs> then in February, a month later, I wrote, Hey guys, it's been four weeks since I got the cake and nobody's fessed up. My mom comes into town tomorrow, still eager to find out who has eaten some. Just to recap, I want to know who ate some cake. It was a gift and I need the whole thing. Uh, then I wrote an email in March, a month ago, or a month later. Uh, hey guys, me again. LOL. For serious though, it's been a month. It's been a m- month since my last electro mail about El Cake, the cake. <laughs> Jesus. Super, super re- quick recap because I'm already wasting your guys' time. But the basic gist is, my mom sent me a cake. <laughs> I want to know who ate some. So this is where I am on this. Basically, it's not a big deal. They know where you are on this. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It also is a big deal. And don't say LOL, but for serious. Uh, a month later, in April, I write. Uh, my mom sent me a cake on my birthday, <laughs> and some of you ate the cake. I really, really, really need, not want, but need to know who ate some of the cake because the cake was a gift. And then, <laughs> in huge block letters, to those of you who thought the above sentences were major TLDNR, and I agree, I only wrote them because I wanted to know who ate my cake. <laughs> <laughs> Read the simple <laughs> statement below, which is longer than that. <laughs> I don't give a shit about stuff like this usually. You guys know me. But three months ago, my mom sent me a cake for my birthday, and some of you ate the cake, and I really, really need, not want, but need to know who ate some of the cake. That's the, the TLDNR <laughs> is the same as the top. <laughs> I don't give a shit about anything. You guys know that. <laughs> LOL. Okay. Enough from this cake, weirdo. But if you ate the cake, let me know, because it was a LOL, you guys. It. it was a gift. <laughs> it was a gift from my mom, and I need to know who ate some of it. Attached is a picture of me right now, so you know it's me writing the email, and it's like a very darkly lit photo of me in bed. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> so sad. Uh, I should respond to this email now, but I don't think this is sent to like creative at collegehumor.com. Right. Didn't you? I think there was like more that you sent just to our personal Gmails at some point. <laughs> right later about the cake. Yeah. You can also, I think, reply on that thread to new emails. <laughs> That's uh, true. <laughs> so just reply all and then add the emails. Yeah. Hey, guys. Eight years later, still thinking about the cake. Uh, all right. It's time to take a break. A break from cake. <laughs> we are back. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Nice. It's like, hello backwards. No, it's not. <gasps> Ole. <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> forget it. <laughs> I don't want to forget it. I want to know you. <laughs> Ole. Guacamole. <laughs> and I'm pissing myself. <laughs> you also pissed yourself before we started. <laughs> and during the break. Uh, I just realized something. Today is June 1st. If a miracle happens. Oh, my God. <laughs> today will in fact be the day i know where you're going <laughs> i don't even want to dare s- we say i can't i don't want to i don't want to jinx it could by we? saying it but we could be moving into 
obviously calling it a dream home would be underselling it. So yes. that's that's at least me leading you to the doorstep of what we're talking about. A dream home. We, it is the lost city of Atlantis. It is not a dream home. <laughs> like, I, I did feel bad even calling it that. We recently saw a house that we ideally like to move into. It is, it is what's above Utopia. Valhalla, Valhalla, Shangri La, <laughs> the Garden of Eden. Uh, it is a home. It is a beacon. It is a light. It is an energy source on Raven Nest. It is a house we cannot afford, but it is the one we deserve to yes. be in. It's the house we deserve, but not the house we can afford. Absolutely, right now. we ran out of options in our price range. So what we did was double what we can afford, yes. and what we saw was a actually home. borderline triple. Borderline triple. By the way. <laughs> Ford. We did. It was we our tripled initial. What we, we tripled our afford. initial budget. <laughs> That's right. Without tripling our income, mm-hmm. so we just said we are willing to spend. What we're not. <laughs> we, <laughs> just to get in the door, we convinced ourselves in order to walk through these pearly, pearly gates at Raven Nest. And what we saw dumbfounded us. We were awestruck. We were dumbfounded. We were we we were confounded. <laughs> we were struck founded. It is unfounded, unprecedented. I can't imagine a world where we don't live in Raven Nest. I can't imagine a world where we to do. live and to die in Raven Nest would be more than an honor. To if die I... a thousand ne- <laughs> to to die to die a thousand deaths mm-hmm. for one night in Raven Nest. My my goal in life is to find a woman who will bear me a child who will die in Raven Nest. A child. What a, a child proud to die proud in... moment it would be for me to lose an infant. To lose my kin. <laughs> <laughs> to my king. For me to feel that sense of shame and I will sorrow be, I will be a jester. I will be a I will be a jester in the palace that is Raven Nest. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will proudly serve the king Absolutely. as a humble, humble as jester, as a servant. As I will be a prisoner that is <laughs> to be bound to be beheaded. Absolutely. It would be an honor to find a genie so that I may grant you the other two wishes, for I have but one. It is to die in Raven Nest. For me to live there for an eternity <laughs> as a dead soul would be greater than spending... To be reincarnated as a blade of grass <laughs> on the lawn of New Zion, for, of New Jerusalem. For, that is Raven's Nest. For me to be a patch of grass that a pig would spend eternity shitting on as long as it be in Raven Nest. For it to be in Raven Nest uh, would be such an honor. May I ask you a question? You already have. <laughs> And I have already answered. Do you dream of Raven Nest? Of course not. It wouldn't fit. <laughs> not a house to dream of. I don't sleep. <laughs> I stay awake, longing for Raven Nest. I Dream- lust after her. Dream- <laughs> dreaming. Dreaming implies that I uh, am at a state in my life where I can be restful outside of Raven Nest. To Raven Nest. To Raven Nest. To you. To me. So that we may find the, the, the cash. Raise a glass, but do not let the wine touch your lips, because the wine of Raven Nest is too sweet to bear. But I bear my soul to Raven Nest, and all I am to be to, to that that I am for her. <laughs> for it, for I, for him to go, to me. It may never be enough. But I will have no less than Raven Nest. I will be homeless before I, I am denied that house, which I will be. For we offered 50% asking. This, this is our cover letter. <laughs> anyway, we're uh, two comedy writers. To pay rent in Raven Nest is a travesty, a tragedy that I won't allow to happen to me. Yeah. I can't afford it to happen to be to me. Uh, we took the asking price and, <laughs> and we said no chance. <laughs> to assign a price to Raven Nest is more than a slap in the we, face. We it's slapped slash... the owner across the face. It we is said your house is worth <laughs> tenfold what this is. <laughs> so we'll offer you half. Because you don't deserve half. Yeah. You don't deserve to own Raven Nest. <laughs> Only we are the rightful heirs. Excalibur, the sword and the stone, that is the home <laughs> that I must own. Can somebody own Mount Everest? Can somebody own Vesuvius? Can you own the ocean? Can you Mount own the Olympus, sky? Olympus, the kingdom of the gods. Kingdom come. My kingdom come. It, it actually will The river sticks. Come. Do you... Imagine living a night in Raven Nest where you are not plagued by wet, wet dreams. <laughs> to surf out on a wave of cum. 
as we move out of Raven Nest one day. <laughs> years and years of nocturnal emissions. <laughs> just overpowering the home, the, 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 the en suites. It is a four bedroom. It is a five bathroom. There, there are, is a pool. There are four en suites and a powder room. It is open concept. <laughs> there is a pool. There is a two car garage. There is a gate. <laughs> For I may sleep on that gate. And I don't mean to lay my rest my head beside the gate. I do want to firmly slide my body along the spine of the top of the gate. The gate is fully furnished. <laughs> so the gate is a four-bedroom <laughs> studio apartment. The gate has an ensuite. And every house that I've seen since Raven Nest is a toilet. <laughs> it is absolutely not a home. Uh, I can't imagine living anywhere but. And at the same time, we can't, I can't stress this enough, we can't afford to live there. As we, we are speaking we, right now, we are waiting on the email from our realtor mm -hmm. to tell us that we did not get the house. Absolutely, we will not get Raven Nest. We do not deserve Raven Nest. But show me a soul who does. Impossible. More than improbable. But there is a chance we do get it, and the next couple episodes we'll be recording from there. So that'll oh be a chill little place. Oh my god, could you imagine? No, I cannot. Uh, but before that... Well, actually, slightly after. We're going to be in Australia. Oh. We're coming this week, next week, next that week. That would be the biggest tragedy of all, to get Raven, Raven Nest. Nest to move in on the first and to leave, leave on the second for two. I would miss the house I so desperately. I can't. Only only, only uh, an adventure in a new uh, tropical, it's not tropical, exotic uh, continent country w could tear me away from Raven Nest. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, that's what it is. Great. We're going to be in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane, Perth. Uh, five cities, one of which is already sold out. Sydney, dangerously close. Uh, tickets available still on our website, if I were you show, dot com. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was lost again. <laughs> my body is here, but my mind, <laughs> my soul, my heart, my eyes are with Raven Nest. I can't. To think of Raven Nest would be putting it down. It thinks of me. <laughs> it thinks of you? I don't think so. It is you. You are it. <laughs> That's very good. What bedroom would you want? To Raven Nest. <laughs> to Raven Nest. The master will be the master's room. <laughs> there, are four, there are four masters. You have to show some reverence. The master only has one master. My master is Raven Nest. <laughs> and your master is me and Raven Nest. <laughs> What do you mean? She needs me in that master. <laughs> she wants me in that master. Raven Ness must have me, for I am her master. <laughs> you... <laughs> we are husband and wife, that home and I. Can you imagine finding a woman, a soulmate, after uh, living in Raven Nest? Can you imagine starting a family after having... I only spent... have so much love to give. And? And it is all with her. <laughs> With Raven Nest. <laughs> Could you imagine sleeping with Raven Nest? Can you imagine taking her in as a as a, a soulmate and a wife to you? I can imagine letting Raven Nest wear a strap on and pegging me, <laughs> sir. Can you? <laughs> How do you imagine that happening? I would like to put a strap on on the ensuite. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Forget I said this. <laughs> A strapping strap on on the on suite. Uh, all right, let's get to one last question, shall we? Yes. Uh, this one is a relationship question. We, we I'm sorry, we can we can only avoid it for so long. Yeah, we get so many relationship questions that even on our special non relationship, yeah, there's still one. episode one of three. But this one's pretty good. Do you have another? Is there a name worthy? Of even bringing up after we discuss Raven Nest. A hidden song? I don't think Raven, <laughs> Raven Nest knows a hidden song. I think she is an opera. I think she is a swan song. I think she's a siren song. Meaning? Meaning I am sailing to her, <laughs> and I will let her consume me, knowing that I will die a slow death, but to live, but to live in Raven Nest. Dying in Raven Nest would be... So honorable because it meant we were in it again. To Raven Nest. <laughs> Absolutely to Raven Nest. <laughs> Raise your mead. <laughs> and your steed. All right. Raven Nest writes. 
All right. Duke University, what's up? This All right, is, yeah. Am I as loud as I think I am? Yes. Nice. Perfect. You guys don't know what's going on inside my head. You don't know how loud I think I am. Look at everybody in the audience. You know, we spent all weekend in Chapel Hill, and I don't know what they're talking about. You guys are not obnoxious, rich, spoiled assholes. You look fine to me. Although there are a couple of you. Right. I know who we're, we're both thinking. thinking yeah. This, this guy. guy Green right. shirt. What's your name? <laughs> da- oh, David is the most spoiled asshole name yeah. you can have. Let me guess your last name. What is it? Money? <laughs> I was going to let him say oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mo- well, money's his middle name. Oh, <laughs> for sure. David Money, what's your last name? Cash. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Insane. David, David Money, Money Cash, Cash, and that's your brother. Yeah. Jeremy Money Cash. What's your name, brother? <laughs> what is it? Jonathan. John- oh, so Jewish and rich. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's not... Because I'm Jewish. Oh, uh, should I not have said anything about that? Yeah. So like, it's fine if he's Jewish, yeah, bad if he's rich. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> Any good. other Jewish people here? <laughs> See, they live in North Carolina. So tight. Uh, who came here from far, far away? <laughs> where, whoever is the closest to me, where did you come from? That's just not Florida, that far. just from this show, just for this show. Oh right? yes, you, you did come from Florida for this show. Really, for this show? Yeah, I get. I You're gave, fucking I, crazy. <laughs> That's nuts. Did you drive here? How long did it take? Twelve hours. You don't look like you're old enough to operate a motor vehicle. <laughs> How did you drive? He, you drove. Okay, good. And I you had a car seat it. for him, right? A car seat for the driver? <laughs> for really short people? Are you videotaping this entire thing? Oh, it's Will. Hey, brother. <laughs> That's okay. I forgot we paid someone to tape the entire thing. Did you give him money? I, well, Jeremy and David cash money. Offered him 10 Yeah, they just each. they sort of just like sweat money, so they stood yeah. near Will. Yeah. That was cool. It's like a, one of those cash uh, flowy machine thingies. Yeah. I, I've, uh, <clears throat> never mind. Who here is also tipsy? No, I'm just joking. Did you guys have class today? Yes. Oh, isn't class the worst? <laughs> Who here likes weed, huh? <laughs> We're like two guys trying to be cool, but we're actually here to talk about God. (laughs) Yeah, being high is pretty cool, but you know what's the highest of all? Heaven. Can we talk about heaven and how you get in? You don't smoke ganja. (laughs) I'll tell you that right now. (laughs) I know a guy who got high all the way on top of a cross. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) That's exactly his name, too. (laughs) Uh... No, just kidding. You guys like getting high? You guys like getting hammered? I'll tell you who got high and who got hammered. <laughs> How do you think he's stuck there? Nice. I'm no, half no, Christian. I'm half Christian. It's cool. It's cool. But I seriously, who here likes getting nailed? <laughs> Smart school if you're already laughing. Uh, who here does go to Duke? Do you think you could get into Duke if you applied right now? Don't I have to be in high school? <laughs> you don't have to be in high school to apply to college. Really? Yeah, you could just be like, this is my resume. I did some community college, which you did. I'd like to finish my education at Duke. And then you could say, I've, I'm also a, a fairly successful comedy writer. Oh, so I could, yeah, I could talk about that. You could that. use that. Okay. Well, I had a point six when I failed out of college. <laughs> oh, man. Man. And Does, then you blew a point six. Am yeah. I right? And then a six blew me. Oh, yeah. Dude. This is your essay. Talk about that. I'm going to major in slam poetry. <laughs> and minor in art history. Did, the, did you guys have to get, uh, take interviews to get into this school? Is that that kind of school where the, uh, an alumni would interview you? Wow, that's legit, dude. Either way, you should say that during the interview. <laughs> wow, that's legit, man. Yeah. And you know who's going to be interviewing you is Shane Battier. <laughs> really? Yeah. Mr. Battier, Battier himself. himself. Yeah. What an honor. <laughs> Sir. 
Uh, so here, who here has heard of our podcast before? Thank God. Who here hasn't? Leave now. It's all inside jokes for the first people who wooed. Uh, so the show we do is an advice podcast. We answer people's questions. They'll email us to ifireyoushow at gmail.com. We'll comb through the thousands of submissions and reply to a few of them every episode. Sometimes it's just me and Jake alone in our room, and sometimes we do it with 700 smart people in the room, too. Yeah. And that's today. 700 of you here. Can you believe it? That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> They're smart enough to count. <laughs> they know it's six. Um, just cash and money and his two friends. <laughs> which makes four, drove. I know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we start every episode with an original theme song, uh, and we are fortunate today to be able to do that live, thanks to Rachel, Jake's sister, and her friend Jenny. Uh, so Rachel and Jenny, will you come up on this stage and uh, start our show with a, with a theme song that you yourselves have written? Let's give Rachel and Jenny a round of applause. <laughs> I'm gonna need your mic over here, Blumenfeld. Well, I figured I would sing along. <laughs> you don't know the words, <laughs> but actually that's kind of a cool idea. <laughs> we just ruined their song. <laughs> Wait, you keep on playing and Amir will freestyle. <laughs> no, no, I would never. All right, uh, one more time for Rachel and Jenny. Jenny. Let's keep it going for them. And you guys go away. Love Forever. you so much. You're my sister. You're cool. Came out of the same mom. <laughs> Two people out of the same woman. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, I guess that happens a lot. <laughs> Still kind of crazy. <laughs> Also, she's a triplet, so that's what we should really be focusing on. Yeah, three, sure. <laughs> three humans out of the same person <laughs> at the same time. That's a little more Hey, unfair. give it up for my mother, Laura Hurwitz, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, carry three fucking humans <laughs> well, you in her stomach. You shouldn't, say, you shouldn't say bitch, carry three. Cause then, <laughs> that's what she did. I know, but you shouldn't just use the B word, especially about your own mother. I was, that's what I was saying. No, 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 she's my bitch, man. <laughs> Uh, Love that lady forever. Sure. Okay. Uh, and for those of you at home listening, the reason there was a smattering of laughter during that song is because Jake was pantomime slow dancing with me. <laughs> I was not. Now, I resent the implication and the accusation. You were slow dancing with me. <laughs> it really sounded like you had more to say there. Uh, all right. You guys want to get started? You guys want to help us give some people advice? Great. Does anybody know the passcode for my phone? <laughs> sort of. Oh, okay. All One, right, two, I'm three, in. three. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Cool how I knew it, right? Much like a seventh grade science fair project, my problem is trifold. <laughs> Reddick was all about the threes. <laughs> Uh, all, P.S. I've also been a personal trainer for years, and I met Jake right before COVID at the gym I used to work. Whoa, we talked will about, we be fitness? We talked about doing a free training session, but things closed down before we got the chance, and the offer is still on the table if you're ever looking for a new workout routine. Wow. Okay. I left that gym, sadly, but you never know. 
you never know. What was the what was the gym that you do you remember this interaction? Yeah, I do. It was at Willie B Fitness, uh, a gym in Williamsburg. Uh, and I remember Jason, a jacked blonde man uh, who came up to me and he was really strong. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, we we hit it off one strong guy to another. Uh, he asked me if you I said would train that he wanted him, to train And I you. said, I don't really because you probably do that. No- I'm more of a comedian. Yeah. And then he was like, no, I know you're a comedian. I'm a huge fan. I just wanted you to train me because you're so strong. No, and he I said, asked That's if really he could nice. train you, not the other um, way around. And then he offered as a joke to train me, even though he's like, clearly you don't need it. Um, but I said I would. And then uh, COVID hit. So, yeah, it's the only reason I haven't done it. But, yeah. He wanted to make you look more like him. He asked me for a spot. <laughs> yeah. He was benching 500 pounds. And I fucking screamed. I spotted him with my cock. What's that and mean? <laughs> I mean, I could lift that. I could lift fucking five wheels with my dick. That's what that means. <laughs> That's actually what that means. Uh, you feel and Jason will tell you that. <laughs> Listen to your masculinity right now. Just feeling threatened. <laughs> Traps, How's that for toxic laps, masculinity? <laughs> Uh, if there's a reason Jake doesn't sound wise today, it's because you had your wisdom teeth pulled three days ago. Very good. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, so I did. We're listening to someone with less wisdom today. And was it uh, fine yeah, when they got rid of them? Home, or? or if you're watching the video at home, I can kind of... Uh, can you see back there? No. Uh, yeah. yeah. Too Not really. Were they in and then they pulled it out or were they like below the gum line? They were in. They were there. They, they were, were there. teeth. You used those they were teeth. teeth there. Yeah, yeah, I flossed them. I brushed them. They were part of me. Did they give them to you at the end? Were like, by the way, look at this fucking size of this thing. Nobody would want what I what I saw. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you the whole fucking. I'll tell you the saga. It starts. <laughs> it starts when I'm twenty five or six. All it right. basically starts ten years ago. Okay. <laughs> My dentist at home in Connecticut tells me I need my wisdom teeth out. But he says, you had a pretty big mouth. We actually don't need to take all of them. We're just going to take the two on the upper and lower on your right side. Yeah. And I say, sounds fine by me. Uh, Go in. They put me out. I get the wisdom teeth out. Two weeks later, I come back for my check-in. The dentist, who is a different dentist now, like the one that owned the practice, says to the, the one who removed my teeth, why didn't you remove all of them yeah like you should have <laughs> you should have removed them all like you if you're gonna go it. under yeah if you're gonna fucking get general anesthesia go to sleep you should just get all the teeth right do they you do might that? as well do they do the full anesthesia like at the dentist's office that seems like very extreme for just like somebody next to you is getting their teeth cleaned and you're completely like dead to the world out. yeah yeah i mean i think that's i think it was general anesthesia maybe it was laughing gas but i don't think it was laughing gas i like think you're you laughing gas out. if you're like yeah to like make you more calm i was completely out i counting backwards from 10 <laughs> instantly dead seated came seated, to. not laying down like in a hospital style I mean, laying seated in the chair, but, you know, full, full recline. Yeah. yeah. The 180. You're yeah. in Delta Comfort. Uh-huh. Um, and I did a bad job taking care of them. They tell you not to suck through a straw. And I, it, when I went home, had a thick smoothie through a straw. <laughs> totally forgot somehow because I was the, drugged up, I guess. What's the uh, physics of why sucking is bad? It like pulls the, yeah, the, the wound it, up or something? It, yeah. I mean, it's it's like a vacuum in your throat. So it's like there's actual holes in your in your gums. Yeah. So it must be like... <laughs> You like know, just a pull stuff on going that. in and then everything is getting sucked out. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So you want to avoid that. But then I okay. like, we went to, it was, it was the weekend. It was like two weeks before we moved to LA. So I like came into the city, met you, Marty. We like went out, smoked cigarettes, took vodka shots, ate sushi. I did You're not, not supposed to eat rice. Cigar- Don't I throw me cigarettes. into this thing. Yeah. We I, went out and had vodka yeah. shots and smoked cigarettes. No, I, got, I did not. <laughs> all right. I got, you had vodka shots. We did. That was the night we went to sushi. That was the night we went to sushi. <laughs> oh yeah. We talked about going to Vegas and bought plane yeah. tickets to Vegas that we never actually used. Well, didn't we, you and we used them and then Matt canceled them or something. I thought uh, we like, cause we drove, I don't know. Well, anyway, yeah. That was it before was that you night. got your wisdom teeth out? No, that was like th- three days after. Wow. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> So anyway, that's that's just a that's that's a that's a tangent. All right, that's just a tangent. <laughs> so a few years later, I knew that I was supposed to be getting my left side wisdom teeth out, but I didn't really have any interest, and I and yeah. they weren't bothering me. They and weren't you're hoping ever like, like maybe if I don't mention it, it's fine. Yeah, and the reason I had gotten the right ones out is because like there was an irritation in the gum, and I kept on getting an infection, and it would always hurt. So it made sense that I was like, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna deal with this. Um, so for years left side completely felt fine every time i went to the dentist they're like you really should have those wisdom teeth out you really have to have those wisdom teeth out schedule your wisdom <laughs> teeth coming out it's like i will i will i will but like then a month ago i like finally got one of those infections again and i was like okay it makes sense i'll just i'll get them out okay Rip the band-aid <laughs> yeah um i go to my dentist i schedule it and the it, they tell me when I arrive that I'm not going to be put out there. I'm like, are you guys going to knock me out? And they say, <laughs> no, you can actually do this. Like you can do this while you're awake. And I've looked into it since. And it's true. Obviously <laughs> you can do it while you're awake. I don't know why anyone in their right mind would cause it's, it's insane. Yeah. They, so your uh, conscience, your conscious, I should say, yeah. fully awake, awake. Not even like the laughing gas, but just like not numbness even laughing in your gas. throat. She just gave me like four or five <laughs> shots of Novocaine in my face. Each one hurt. So it's like already I'd rather have just gotten knocked out. Yeah. But a bunch of Novocaine in my face, waiting for it to, waiting to feel numb. <laughs> then... You know, I also have TMJ, right? Where I like can't open my mouth very well. Yeah, your jaw clicks. With, the, with a click, yeah. Yeah, for anyone at home, here you go. That's yeah. the sound of my jaw cracking. Yeah. Um, so I can't open my mouth very <laughs> wide before it cracks. And if after it cracks, if I shut my mouth at all, or if I keep it open, it'll like lock up and be very uncomfortable. So I really, this is such a good time for a video podcast. This is as <laughs> wide as I can open my, my mouth. Ready? Yeah. Right now or just uh, before the crack? Right. This is, this is, yeah, this is without cracking. This is what I can do at the dentist is this. Okay. Would you say it's shallower than me? Yeah. I'm probably like, I feel like I'm three quarters of what you're at. Maybe even half. It's not very wide. Yeah. That's crazy. I could never do that. What you're <laughs> doing. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking suck. It hurts to even think about it. Okay. Um, so... And I told them this previous, <laughs> before before they, um, you know, when I heard that I wasn't going to be put out, I was like, I have TMJ. I can't open my mouth very wide. This is as wide as I can open it. And they're like, that's fine. That's okay. Um, and, I, and in my head, I was like, okay, if this starts to like be really painful, I'm just going to walk out. It's not worth it. <laughs> but, uh, stop right there. This yeah. is really well, painful, and I'm going to walk out. I wonder if that's thought, ever happened during the course of a wisdom tooth extraction. A walk well, it out. almost did during mine. She was like, she they got one out, and she was like, do you want to stop? Because she knew how bad it was. So Which, They got at the top or the bottom first? The top. The top one was first. and Literally, she you could just feel them going like boom, boom, like removing a yeah, fucking all, screw like you, from a plank of wood. You know, you go to the dentist, and you see like the, the fucking – the thin little instruments you see the little needles and you're like oh i don't want that when i looked over it was like a fucking it looked like a set of chisels it was like true carpenter tools they had like they were so pliers. thick and heavy pliers forceps like who, you, who does splitters. this job like who chose like you have to be kind of fucked up to like i want to fucking do this like i want to pull yeah. teeth yeah yeah i think i would agree <laughs> it's kind of messed up so she's trying to get my top tooth. The angle is too bad because my mouth isn't going to open anymore. Yeah, they can't get... And it's the back one. It's the yeah. hardest one to remove. They have me like biting on something. So like it, I can like... I, so I'm not having to hold my mouth open, but I'm also not having to like... Uh, but I'm also not having to like, um, you know... Uh, what is the word that I'm trying to say? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They, they basically have my mouth wedged open. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what it feels like. Does it hurt when they're pulling the tooth or you're so numb? You just feel like movement. 
you feel pressure and but they're like the the way that they had to get at my tooth because I can't open my mouth like I'm feeling they're like pulling at my cheeks they're like <laughs> using my lips as leverage for their tools so it's painful like it's pinching they're like pulling out my beard hair it's not Novocaine is not doing the job <laughs> like it's not enough like yes my I didn't feel the instruments on my teeth but everything I could feel on my face the twisting the pulling the punching oh god and um, you're you're they, just getting like just instinctively like annoyed like someone is punching yeah. you so your fight or flight sentence are right. senses just are like, heightened turn your head all the way to the side i'm just trying to like i'm basically lying in fetal position in the chair trying to <laughs> tilt my head back burying my top teeth and is it, this the she, one you're attracted to the, the dentist? No, she's the one that owns the practice. And Got it. Yeah, this this uh, this <laughs> they other brought lady, in yeah. the closer. Enter yeah. Sandman for the wisdom extraction. I'm not, a, I'm not attracted her to her just because of how much she hurt me. <laughs> She, or maybe I am at this point. They, she couldn't get the tooth out. Couldn't get an angle on the tooth to the point where she had to saw my wisdom tooth in half. So she could take which, it out in pieces. Which way did she saw? Like down, like down, almost like imagine a loaf of bread that you're slicing it or like cutting the top off like a mushroom cap? <laughs> no, down the middle of the bread. So, you know, your tooth has like four little prongs and the and the cap at the top. She just cut that cap straight in half. How? So she took out with a, a weird looking fucking uh, Like a drill. little hacksaw? It looked like a tiny little drill. And I just heard the smell of like burning enamel, felt it. felt. So then that's like, the fucking worst. Is Evelyn, she freaking out too? Or is like, I want her heart rate monitor. Like while this is happening, is this the equivalent of her like eating a salad at the Cheesecake no, Factory? No, this is not just casual calm, for her. Or she's like, not oh casual. shit, something is going. <laughs> Like, I have to I don't put out a fire like, in my kitchen level. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's like I'm, like, flatlining, but it's like she's she's like, damn, this is not an easy procedure. Like, yeah. what she wants is that this tooth just comes right out. It's not fighting. But the... Maybe, like, fishing, that level of adrenaline. Like, whoa, I got yeah. something here. Right. Yeah. She wants to get a good grip, rip it out, <laughs> but she can't do that because the, like, the tails of my teeth are curved. They're not, like, they weren't straight up and down, so she couldn't get that clean pull, and then she had to cut it in half, so she basically had to, like, unhook it from my mouth. Um, and I could hear them, like, using that drill and, like, almost like a splitter, like, cracking my teeth open. And this is just for the out. first one. This is just for the first one. And she so, did it. So she got the. How long do you think the, it took? Like from the beginning it, of the injection to like this moment where they're slicing it in half to try to take it out bit by bit. That took probably 25 minutes. The entire thing was supposed to take an hour and it took almost an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> My God. Okay. So 25 minutes to, in, they're slicing your tooth in half, trying to yeah. pull it out piece by and piece. And multiple times, she's like told me to raise my left hand if it was ever too uncomfortable. So multiple times I've raised my left hand and I've asked for more Novocaine because it's starting to wear off. Like they'll and just be pulling, pulling, pulling. And then all of a sudden it's like sharp searing pain. It's like, oh, wow, you just hit somewhere where you didn't numb my mouth. You have to get another shot in there. And then how how is your general attitude slash disposition at this point? Are you like, wow, this is crazy? <laughs> but like let's fucking do this or like this is a huge mistake get me the fuck out of here stop yeah, it I'm like this is a huge mistake and i was also like if and i was like oh wow so like my idea of walking out i didn't realize that i would have half of my like my tooth is cut in half i can't walk out this has to we have to finish it so uh and like you know there she's asking like are you okay is, are, is everything all right i'm like and i was like i mean no i mean yeah i guess <laughs> uh, it's as good as can be what and then at one point, so then yeah so then she finished one and a half tooth she couldn't she couldn't get one of the roots on this one she's like the other one is like fully in your sinus you don't want it out you just have a, a hole in your sinus and i'm looking at the x-ray where she's like showing me how much of my tooth she'd taken out. Like basically there's 25% of my tooth just left in my gum. And I'm like, does this even count as a wisdom tooth extraction? Like, is this good? Did this help anything? And she was like, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's good. It's good. We like needed to get it from the surface. And now like your teeth are protected and your gums are going to grow over and it's going to be fine. And like, there's a chance that in 15 years, your, your um, gum will reject this new growth. And it's like, 
And then she, and this then is that just was the top. She, you haven't done the bottom yet. Not even, no, not the bottom yet. And so she's done and I'm like, and I just straight up asked her, I was like, what is going on here? Like, what is, this isn't a standard Normal. procedure, right? Like <laughs> there's no way that you do this every single time you take someone's wisdom teeth out. And that was when she explained to me all of like the things about my teeth that like my, my jawline was like fighting for fighting for the tooth that it was uh, further down in my gum line that my roots were hooked rather than straight. And she's showing me the teeth and they're just like crumpled pieces of garbage Enamel. that she's, yeah, that she's pulling out like willy nilly. So it wasn't looked, like a single shark tooth. No. It was like, look at these rocks that I found on the beach. <laughs> yeah. She had to shatter my tooth and then take it out piece by piece is what happened. Um, and then she was like, do you want to not do with the bottom? Because she, like, she knew how uncomfortable it was. You clearly aren't having fun here. Do you want to just call it at this point? <laughs> yeah. Like, do you, like we can, we can stop now. I know this is a lot. And I was just like, I, I mean, I have to get it done at some point. Right. Like it's at this, at this stage, I'm like, I'm not going to go to three different wisdom teeth surgeries. <laughs> If I left, I would never get that t the bottom one out. <laughs> so I was like, so we just have to like do it and hope that it's not as bad as the first one. And uh, lo and behold, the bottom one was not quite as bad as the first one. She still had to also cut it in half. Okay. Um, she still did not get the full tooth, uh -huh. but enough of it came out. <laughs> enough of it came out. It was then, like 80 to 90% of the bottom tooth. Okay, also so she's half. So there is still a little wisdom fragments in your top and bottom. Yeah, but the oh, gum yeah. grows over it, and in theory, there's more room for your now furthest back molar to live and breathe. Right. Yeah, and what I looked up after the fact was also like because everyone was telling me that I had to get them removed because of crowding, and I looked it up, and it was like crowding just happens naturally as you age. It doesn't really have to do with your wisdom teeth. So okay, it's <laughs> kind of a farce for the dentist to make cash. So the procedure ends, and are you like, wow? That was intense, but I'm relieved to finally go home. Where you're like, I didn't want that. That yeah, was messed it's, up. It's Fuck that. you. I, I, yeah. I was, I, I was like, you guys lied to me. I asked if I was going to get put out, put down. You said it, you said I didn't need to. And then you gave me the worst experience of my life. You were like, it's all going to be fine. Don't worry. And I told you that I couldn't open my mouth enough. I said it was going to be hard. You said it was going to be fine. And then the you most egregious thing. I'm like the way out. Do you guys validate? They I'm serious. Called, do you validate? There's like pain meds that uh, you get prescribed. There's a CVS just down the street. They're like, we're going to call it in right now. It'll be ready within like 20 minutes. You can go pick it up. Is this in I Brooklyn? Go, like, are you walking these places or is this yeah, driving? Yeah, it's, in, it's in Brooklyn. So I'm just, I walk from the dentist to CVS. <laughs> uh, they say it's not ready. I wait a little bit, check in. They say it's not ready. Wait a little bit, check in. They say it's not ready. They say, did you, are you sure they, they called it in? I call them. They say, yeah, we called it in. Oh, actually, no, it got, it got bounced back. Uh, we're going to call it in in a second. The doctor's in a procedure. And I'm like, I've been standing at CVS for 30 minutes. I ended up by the time that they finally like, also every time I called them, it went straight to their voicemail. They weren't picking up. So you're wearing a so, mask and also like chewing on gauze or something. Yeah. My, I'm, spitting bloody gauze into the garbage can at CVS. They got rid of all of the chairs and like the waiting area because it's for COVID shots now. Of course. Um, so I'm just standing against the wall in a crowded CVS um, with my mouth bloody. The Novocaine, or yeah, the Novocaine slowly wearing off, all of the pain coming back. Can't get the pain meds because they didn't call the name. I ended up waiting there for an hour and a half before I finally got um got the medicine and what was the medicine was it like the good stuff no it was not the good stuff it was just like extra strength ibuprofen <laughs> so they didn't give you like ibuprofen. percocet they gave yeah. you like the equivalent of having three tylenols and two pills yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> oh my god so then you when you left were you like i didn't like that bye or were you like hey thanks bye i gotta go we'll talk later one, but i'm course. not okay I'm going to, I'm going to write them another, I'm going to, I'm going to get in touch with them because I also found out today that my insurance didn't cover it. So I, I need to be like, you guys 
fucking suck. <laughs> like, was it? Was this your like childhood dentist, or is this like a new no, recommendation? This is like a, a bougie Brooklyn dentist that that I thought was supposed to be good, but they're they're like they're too bougie to take insurance or something. But I they've they've worked with my insurance for a long time, so I think they should have like preempted and told me what it was going to cover. I asked what it was going to cover and they said it's going to cover 80% of the procedure. And then I got the bill and it it didn't, it's not even <laughs> close. And then I called my insurance and they were like, yeah, um, we cover 80% of like our rate or whatever. I don't know. Just, everybody's the worst. Everyone's just trying to get my fucking teeth and my cash. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How does it feel now? Like what was the next day? Was it as painful, but you had painkillers? Um, that, that day and that night was really, really bad. And I was like, aside from being in pain, I was just like morose and full of regret that I had ever (laughs) even gone to the dentist to get my wisdom teeth out. It was almost like I felt stupid. I was like, I shouldn't have done this to myself at all. But Um, I think in the long run, it'll be good. Like in two weeks when your mouth is fully healed, will you be happy that you did it? I think I would be, I think I'd be happy that I did it if I had gotten it covered by insurance, which it always is. And I've gotten, (laughs) aside from the dentist not getting them all out the first time in Connecticut, like my childhood dentist, they did a good job. So I would have just, and they, they take my insurance. So I would have just done that or gone somewhere that takes my insurance. So I guess the, uh, the lesson here. The unsolicited advice is uh, get your wisdom teeth out as early as possible. And if they offer it to you in one fell swoop, do that. And if they tell you you can go completely out subconscious, yeah, do that. Do that. For sure, do that. <laughs> oh, my God. And check God. with your insurance before you get anything done. I guess people probably do that, but I'm too trusting. I'm just like, oh, yeah, my insurance covers this. Great. And then you get the like the bill from your insurance and you find out that they don't. And I think the doctors know that you don't and just don't want to tell you because then you won't get anything done with them. And they'll charge a lot because insurance companies will sometimes blindly pay. So they'll be like, that cost $28,000. Yeah. <laughs> insurance yeah. companies are like, yeah, that's fine. We'll just charge everyone $700 a month to get our insurance yep. and then cover this shit. Right. But if you have Guardian Dental, you pay like $7 <laughs> and uh, and it feels good, but then they actually don't cover anything. So oh, it's... that's fun. We have the same dental insurance, I just realized, because we're both employed by the same company, which is HeadGum. Yeah. So really, we and only we have actually... ourselves to blame. Yeah, we we founded the company, so we should definitely get everyone better dental. But I think yeah. dental is like just not that good across the board. Yeah, because they'll assume that you don't have to get this insane procedure done. Although if they recommended it and it's like for your health, I guess they're saying you didn't have to get it done. I, they... I don't know. No, they should. They should. They They usually cover this. They just don't cover it at my dentist. Sheesh. Well, I'm glad um, it hurts less now. That's good. And yeah. uh, hopefully in the long run, it'll be worth it. And I feel that good to I'll, complain about it. I'll <laughs> let me pay for it because I feel I feel like I kind of messed you up. It was my idea to go guardian <laughs> dental insurance wise. Really? So, yeah. How much was it? I'll Venmo you right now. <laughs> um, awesome. <clears throat> yeah, it was. What was it? Uh, forty thousand dollars <laughs> um forty forty five thousand dollars <laughs> did you tip <laughs> yeah i tipped two hundred percent you tipped ninety thousand dollars you Customary. idiot <laughs> You're going to cover it or not? Fine, I'll send you 135 grand. That's enough. Then you really have to stop complaining about this shit. You made out like a bandit. (laughs) I guess you're right. Uh, All right, let's take a break. Oh, wait, I guess I should say this is If I Were You, a dental podcast. Um, The only one on the internet hosted by us. I'm Amir. I'm Jake. We have been talking a lot about dental procedures recently. Yeah, I mean... Write what you know, I guess. And we've been in the thick of the dental shit right now. But um, that's right. When we get back after these messages, let's uh, let's answer some questions, shall we? Yeah, I think that's right. Enough is enough. Actually, speaking of crying, why don't we now get to uh, your nervous breakdown? Yes. <laughs> so we're recording this on a Sunday, going out on a Monday. Not two days ago on a Friday, you were hightailing it back from Northern California to Southern California in a rental car. 
down to my parents' house so that you can what? Um, <laughs> let's see. Where where did where did all of this come from? So after the tour, I went to Los Angeles. Yeah. Um. To have to spend Thanksgiving with my brother. Okay. Uh, we drove up the coast of California. Beautiful, Big Sur. Beautiful, great, beautiful, gorgeous, great, good stuff. We saw my cousins in Santa Rosa. Beautiful, relaxing Hour time. North. Yeah, it was super lovely, perfect. Did you decompress? I uh, yeah, I, I did decompress a little bit. Did you detox? I, I didn't. Yeah, I detoxed a little bit. I mean, it's it was always like it's very relaxing, but I still like wasn't home. You know, I was like still living out of the bag. Right. But it was nice. It was great seeing my brother. Awesome seeing my cousins. Um, my cousin has a little five year old. And she's just like lovely times. She's like medicine. It was great. She yeah. was like she's the best. And then, <laughs> then uh, I had to get back to New York by Saturday morning so I could move. My movers were coming Saturday at noon, so I needed to take a red eye uh, Friday night. On Thanksgiving Day, I realized that I never bought my flight home. <laughs> so I, like on Thursday, searched. you're like, oh, Friday night, time to check when my flight is. Yeah. Uh oh, I didn't buy one. Did I not buy one? I'm like just searching on my phone. Maybe like my cousin's like, "Hey, will you play Barbies with me?" I'm like, "Ah, why? Yeah, of course." Uh, fuck. Where's my one second? <laughs> Uncle Jake needs to buy some shit. Whoa, Jake. Also, like I remembered this. The reason I thought that I booked the ticket is because a month before I had priced out all these flights, found out the one that I needed. <laughs> Was like, oh wow, two hundred and forty-four dollars for a nonstop red eye. That's great. Okay, I'll. Anyway, do this. Uh, time to shut my computer and assume I purchased the ticket. So I never did. I ended up buying a five hundred dollar <laughs> ticket with a layover through Philadelphia, one where I had to uh, not only get onto a to like change terminals, but I had to get onto a shuttle bus that took me outside of the airport <laughs> in the freezing cold at five oh eight a.m. at five in the morning. But before I, before any of that even happened, so I I've got this red eye that I need to catch. I need to drop my brother off at school in Santa Barbara, which is about 300 miles south of yeah. where you were. And just like as we're going, we're not making any progress. It's getting later and later. I, I finally like I just like after I dropped him off, I like my ETA was like 7 p.m. I needed to drop the rental car off by eight. It's like, all right, this is OK. But for, I don't know what what the fuck happened. But it's at one point it was like, yeah, you're, I'm not going to get in there until 745. And I still needed to like change my I needed to like grab bags. I needed to bring the rental car. Yeah. Uh, you need to do a lot of shit. Return the rental car, get to the airport, drop off your bags at my parents' house. Yeah, and your par- your parents had people over for Hanukkah dinner. Yeah, and like, you, you come over to my place, you're frazzled as all shit, and there's just like eight people having a lovely dinner being like, yeah. hey, Jake, sit down, eat, come on, I mean, relax. I think I didn't, oh, I did tell you this, but I, in the, I was in the driveway. I had to piss so bad that I was peeing into a bottle because I didn't want to like run into your house and just go right to the bathroom. So I was like peeing into a bottle. It sprayed everywhere. It got all over my jeans, all over the seat of my car, which I sat in. So I just came in uh, incredibly uncomfortable, reeking of piss and sweat and and just like uh, pure, I was exhausted, adrenaline, like, oh, my God. And I needed to scarf that dinner. I'm like making small talk with like eight different people and then your two nieces too. Which is, I mean, that was lovely. I had a good time there. Uh, it was just very frazzling as very... people grilled you about your situation that was out of your control. Then while you were looking, while you were talking, I was looking to see if Enterprise, the car rental place, is even open yet. And it wasn't. Yeah. And then you're like, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to drive there and uh, drop off my car. Which I thought that like it was like the movies or a library where you're just like, I can like drop off the keys in a box. I swear to God, I've done that before. <laughs> I got there, all the gates are closed. Well, the, before you left, you I walked you out to your car to drive back to Enterprise and you shouted into your hands, fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck. And you said, uh, You've never had a you never had a nervous breakdown or cried from stress, but that's as close as it got. Yeah, I could imagine. I mean, I wanted to, I just couldn't. I would. I wish. I didn't have enough time to cry. If I like, if I could have just sobbed, <laughs> I would have, and I would have been a great relief because I got there. I got to the rental car place. I hid the car on a side street. I called you. I was like, "We, I need you to just like come and return it in the morning." Uh, and I had to return my car in the morning. Yeah. Oh my god. So I took a bunch of pictures. I'm, meanwhile, I'm like running around with my bag, trying to get a ride to the airport with my ex girlfriend. <laughs> and you send me like a picture of where your car is parked. You hid the keys under the license plate, hoping to God nobody steals this rental car. Yeah. Luckily, nobody did. I was on the hook for it. Yeah. And then you made your red eye middle seat 
Middle C through Philadelphia. LAX to Philly. Uh, middle C. I asked so many times to change it, and everybody was so rude to me. <laughs> I like I got there, and I was like trying to smooth talk the dude. I was like, "Yo, is there an extra seat?" He's like, "It's all full." I was like, "Well, like, what happens if people don't check in?" He's like, "Oh yeah, maybe." I was like, "Is there a list?" Just like smiling. I was like, "Who do I talk to? You? You?" Just like really trying to be smooth, and it was working on him a little bit. And then I waited till everybody got on the plane. I went up to the ticket agent. I was like, hey, is there a middle seat? She's like, no, it's all full. I was like, well, did everybody check in? She's like, yeah, you see all this blue? That's everybody checked in. And then there was like four or five yellows. I was like, well, what's the yellow? She's like, that's people that haven't checked in yet. I was like, that's what I was asking. I was like, well, that's can my I, seat. Can I, what about the yellows? She's like, it's all full. And I was like, all right. And I went in. I was like, I'll ask another, another flight attendant. And I was like, hey, did everybody check in? She's like, yeah, full flight. <laughs> I don't know why I felt entitled to like somebody's empty seat, but I just felt like the universe owed me a solid <laughs> and you didn't get it. And then I got here. Um, I got all the way back to my apartment after two flights and the heat was broken. <laughs> my apartment. I just wanted to sleep for two hours before the movers came and it was just a frigid, frigid icicle house. 36 hours later as we're here right now. 12 hours after that, you're listening to this. That's how time works, and people. And guess what? 12 hours from now, we are on the road to Los Angeles yet again. We're driving. The adventure continues. So hopefully we'll have more funny stories from that. Um, should we get to this last question before we run out of time? Before I break into a thousand fucking pieces. <laughs> All right. Let's, do, uh, let's get to this guy. Ready? Game nights are kind of a delicate tightrope act for you me. Were, you were thrown out of a game night. Recently. Yeah, I was playing I Mafia at a friend's of a... No, my girlfriend's friend's house. You can they, say you brought a gun. They, <laughs> I might as well. I should have I'm brought a gun. I'm playing Mafia. <laughs> striped suit. Had I brought a gun, Tommy gun, they would have yelled at me less if I brought the gun. They were just genuinely mad because I messed it up. We don't have to relive that. No, I'd love to hear you. It okay, basically I accused yeah. someone of being a doctor. Mm. No, I... I, I told I no, told you, the crowd that I was the doctor. I accused someone of being a mafia, and he's like, "No, I'm not the mafia." I'm like, "Yeah, right." And he's like, "I'm not. I'm the doctor." I'm like, "You're just saying that to act like you're important that we shouldn't kill you." Yeah. And he's like, "No, I am the doctor. How would you know I'm not the doctor?" And I said, "Because I'm the doctor." And then everyone believed me. I wasn't the doctor. Mm -hmm. They all killed him. Mm -hmm. He was the doctor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And he got genuinely mad at me. Why would you do that? Why would you lie? Why That's would you accuse? That's what I said. The game is all lies. <laughs> Jake's on my side. I'm so, Some people I'm, are against me. I'm against feel, you. I'm against feel free you. to yeah. speak up. Mm -hmm. I, think I shouldn't really have done that. Up were you? A, <laughs> were you? A, oh, not even in the game. Were you a townsperson <laughs> with no role? That's right. Yeah, that's just you're just an agent of chaos at that point. <laughs> See, that's what I don't understand. But that's definitely what he thought. Mm -hmm. He's like, mm -hmm. if you're a townsperson with no role, you have no business saying that. I'm like, why? We're all just accusing really, people of shit. He's acting like he actually went to medical school. <laughs> 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 he really thought he was a doctor. Super fun thing to do if, if you're rich as hell is to buy multiple copies of Werewolf, uh, put all Werewolf cards in a deck and deal them out. If you have like 10 friends, give everybody Werewolf and watch how everyone plays knowing that, or I guess Mafia is what you're playing. Yeah, yeah. Same, play similar yeah. 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 same similar thing. Same amazing social but experience. I've done that a few times and it's fascinating to see immediately you can pick up on people's like poker. poker Wait, tells. you tell everyone that they're the I, bad I guy? I think you tell everyone they're the good guy because if you say everyone's a werewolf and you say werewolves open your eyes, <laughs> everyone just opens their eyes the first night and they're like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that if would you, be me ruining the party. If you An tell, agent of chaos. If you tell everyone they're a good guy, it mm. is just absolute utter chaos because people are like, you're the, you're, I know you're after <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Why aren't they killing that. anyone every night? That's, <laughs> just that's also Salem, like closer yeah. to real society. Yeah. You know, like the, the Salem witch trial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't find any real witches. But it, it is hard to get games going genuinely. But like once they are going, they're very fun. Like those Jackbox TV games. Yeah, oh, yeah. Those are really fun. It's, I, it's, it's late. a tiny little bit of buy-in. Yeah. Instead of Heart of Gold, a Mike of Gold would be a good parody. It's like, a, I guess, a Neil Young song mm. where it's like, I've been to Santa, yeah. I've been to her, I've been searching for a heart of gold. Right. So we got a bunch of theme songs. Wow. Uh, but that one sounded the most like Neil Young, which I, he turns out he's the guy who created, sings, wrote, performs that song. Damn. Good for Neil. And now Neil Young is in the news. Did you see this? No. I think this was, I requested it before, but in the last few days, Neil Young was basically, it's like, if 
Spotify doesn't take Joe Rogan off their platform, then uh, they can remove my music. And then he, they obviously didn't because Joe Rogan's a huge money maker. And then they're removing Neil Young's music from Spotify. Whoa. God, everyone yeah. should do that. We could do that. Yeah, but I don't think we're as influential. We just have right. Michael Gold. Yeah, he has yeah. Heart of Gold. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, totally. But yeah. <laughs> that'd be like kind of cool. Saying, like, influent yeah yeah we do it but nobody cares <laughs> taylor swift justin bieber all the and big me. fucking money makers for spotify yeah. we say we will not be on the platform unless yeah. you remove rogan <laughs> unless you remove if i were you what, <laughs> what would the that fuck be did good we do for... <laughs> what do you think that'd be good for business what do you mean for us like if everyone was like rallying against our podcast um, as it's ha as it's been right uh, interesting i think it'd be bad for business interesting why do I you think, think it'd, it'd be good because like because like bieber taylor swift and all these famous people would be talking about our podcast and then listenership would be through the roof and people like this is i mean this is not great but it's obviously there's no reason for them to be this upset <laughs> justin <laughs> so you're saying yeah uh, so you're saying like if people were railing against us it'd be good because more people would listen and people would be like it's not that bad <laughs> yes exactly. right they'd take our side in the argument and That's they'd an like the uh they'd like the uh, mic of gold thing i think yeah and then they'd, anyway, then they'd listen us. to this segment and they'd be like holy <laughs> shit they called a, a beef with bieber <laughs> like yeah kind of in a roundabout way but sure mm, yeah interesting uh, and then they'd hear that you said it would actually be good for us then they would be mistrustful of you then yeah bad for then us. they'd he they'd watch jake and amir bieber fever and they'd realize that i've been sort of yelling about <laughs> bieber since he was 17 saying that i yeah. have giardia for that tween fuck <laughs> i think did we just watch i think maybe we just watched this episode on patreon but um i was laughing at the line i wish i could say that it was one thing after another because what happened next was all at once <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it's in that video but that does sound familiar shout out I to mean, our patreon yeah. watch those videos i know it's a line i just don't know if we watched it recently but either way good writing <laughs> so dumb uh antoine that's who wrote this he's from montreal okay. Thank you to Antoine for coming up with that parody for us. Indeed. I mean, not coming up with that was I can't, I'm sort of the mastermind. No, no. Thanks no. for you but you did basically Thanks for being nothing. the instrument that I played. He's my guitar and he has a guitar. If nice. that makes sense. You're a fucking ass. You're an ass. Did you ever you go through nothing. a do you ever go through a harmonica phase or like I'm gonna try to learn? Because you're into Dave, right? And he has yeah. that going for him. Dave doesn't play the harmonica. Oh, he Dave doesn't. does not no no. But um you're thinking of i don't know blues traveler john mayer yeah maybe Dave yeah I, I, he definitely Bob doesn't Dylan. it's not known that he would play it i'm sure he can rip a chord on the mon yeah. yes though the answer to, to answer your question yes <laughs> i did purchase a harmonica i did learn to play the harmonica i was not good at the harmonica but you know you fuck around with it it's pretty <laughs> it's a it's a fun little annoying instrument for everybody yeah. Did you get like a cheap one or like a fancy one that you had to like soak overnight and shit like that? Um, cheap one. Just a cheap harmonica. You know, like one of the classic ones that comes in the plastic uh, case. Got it at yeah. Sam Ash. Shout out nice. to Max Ash. <laughs> and now we're quite done with our shout outs. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I got, I just, a, I got a harmonica. Uh, seeing this re receipt you forwarded me, this is a kazoo. That's what you got. You got right. a little kazoo. Yeah. yeah. So, but they're, they're tough to play. <laughs> Tough to play. It's a hard really. instrument. That's why I said Dave Matthews never played one. Uh, actually, this guy, Antoine, wrote us in once, and he has a follow-up pup in addition to the song. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, this is the guy from Montreal that was living with his ex while dating last April. As it turns out, he was able to date around and hang out at girls' places each time. It was kind of annoying while it lasted, but he can proudly say that I live alone now, and I'll don't have these struggles anymore and bachelor life is going well so there you go perfect good for us good for him it's it's not good to be in like a bad week but it's nice to overcome it you know what i mean yeah exactly like when you got your wisdom teeth out you were having a pretty miserable time but yeah now that it's over it's nice right now i for the last for the last 10 days basically my teeth have not hurt for about a week now and right. I haven't 
taken eating for granted at all. Yeah. And it feels good every time I bite into something. Right. And my teeth don't hurt or your teeth didn't hurt last month, but you never thought about it. Yeah. So it, it really takes a toothache to make you appreciate eating. Wow. Right. That's a fucking incre- <laughs> incredible line. It really takes so. a toothache to make you appreciate eating. That's not an incredible line. I think it's... Because it's like, it's almost like interesting in a way that's like, you know, you can take the good with the bad, but it's actually the the write this shit down too it's actually the bad that makes good shit happen like um, yeah you literally can't i hate feel. like this is like true it's pretty do you have my harmonica it's actually Where's really trite it's like <laughs> i just don't think you're the first one to have this realization like there's just so the many to verbalize it or oh there's so many like um i mean just the phrase bittersweet like there's there's so many people that have done and said this. Just not in this way. Better. You said yeah. it takes a toothache to appreciate eating. <laughs> I don't know. You have to stand in the shadow to appreciate the light. Something You walk in the shadow to appreciate the light. There's like... Yeah, that's really good. Toothache to appreciate <laughs> eating. It's, it's... Well, I'm, it's I'm really, mostly a melody It's a guy, little so consequence. Can... It's a little import. <laughs> I think you're one of the last to have this kind of realization. And Actually. One of the poorest vocalizations <laughs> of it that I've heard. Since I was able to sort of come up with the Mike of Gold thing, my next request for theme song is something about how you can only appreciate food after a toothache. Mm-hmm. I think that the fact that you are, are almost doubling, you're so... I'm circling back. You're so like yeah. um, imp- disproportionately proud of yourself for what yeah, that makes it, <laughs> that makes it kind of interesting. Even yeah, more interesting is what you mean. I feel like it really just it shines a bright light on how you know it was middling to bad, and you're so happy with it, <laughs> and you that think it it's genius. It Extra no, that it doesn't. It it almost makes it's a magnifying glass on you. The fact that you're so dumb and small to like what you like, the amount that you <laughs> like it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just thinking of a melody. Why? I did a damn. Yeah, it's I just a heart of gold damn. again. Yeah. It's I think because now that's in my head. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to like, you know, like when a song is playing, you're like, I'm trying to think of another song, but I can't because mm-hmm. this song is playing. Yeah. Don't think that you're the first person to have that realization. Actually, that's kind of interesting. You can't hear two songs at once, and it takes a toothache to appreciate food. Yeah, great. That's a good t-shirt. Really? No. <laughs> but we should sell it. All right. Uh, this is If I Were You, uh, the only Wordle podcast on the internet, uh, hosted by us. I'm Amir. I'm Jake. Got it in four today. Really? really? Did you see my distribution? Yeah. Did you see my distribution? <laughs> Uh, I, maybe I didn't remember it just because it's all in the Slack, so they come in pretty yeah. fast and fierce. It, it was, if I may, it, it was ugly. Yeah, you can hold it up because this will be this will be old news by the time. Okay. So you can actually show us the words. Yeah. Okay. Pluto. Wow. How excited were you after that? When I saw Pluto, I, green I, and two yellows. Two like and uh, two yellows being like an O. <laughs> like one of the two yellows being an O. That's pretty legit. Like and the U green, so that's yeah. in the right place. So, so we're you looking know at where the O is. You we're looking at three is. of five correct, yep. Yep. Uh, and one <laughs> actually where it's supposed to be. So you're like, and you wow. basically ha- you basically you could have gotten it in two. Like, there's no reason it could have been. I thought that it not was court or yeah. amount. Or I thought amount. that it was it's two. I was like, way. oh great, this is two because it's it's a a U and an O. I'm like, I don't have any more vowels. I'm only thinking of words with O U T. Yeah. Um, and when I guessed court, I was like, there actually aren't any other words. That <laughs> so I've already could... got them in a checkmate yeah. situation. <laughs> so this is my two. And then yeah. I saw, I saw this, the, the gray on the C and I was like, fuck. And, but I was like, oh, there's the green O, the green U. And I, like I at least I, I'm, you know, I have, I've got right. this, you know, the green T. And then I was like, all right, great. <laughs> I'll get it in three, and I'll be like, three is oh, a damn. fine consolation. Totally. Yeah. And I already had in my head what I was going to say yeah. to other people 
<laughs> and I was going to say, could have had it in two, but I, <laughs> but I got it in three, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. I, and then I hit him with doubt and it's just the exact <laughs> same, the exact same, a gray and a gray. That hurts. Yeah. That hurts. <laughs> And at that point, you start second guessing everything. You're like, maybe it's not even mount. Then maybe there's like so many words like this, and this is like where this whole thing becomes a luck based paste. Yeah. Um, but I mean, to get I th I th those middle two were pretty ugly to me. Pretty ugly. Court and did you do this? Mount. Did you do this last night or in the morning? Morning. I'm a morning word wordle player. I had a very similar distro. Whoa, that's a that's kind of nice to look at almost. It looks like stairs. Yeah, no yellows. Crest. So I started with crest. I've been doing a new strategy where I'm sort of eschewing vowels. I'm trying mm. to go maximum. I see. Because every word basically gaunt. has one or two vowels. Yeah. Blunt. Wow. 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 It's it's really interesting to get no yellows. Yeah, it's like, if I got a letter, I got it in the right place. That's very fascinating. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I started trying like audio and a do and all these like vowel heavy words, but like that doesn't get you much. Like the, the sound that the word makes is yeah. not as important as the consonants, you know? I do think, I think you need, I think you, it's a consonant heavy game, but I do, right. I don't know. I try to, I try to just guess like uh, three consonants, two vowels. And the nice thing, and what I have started trying to do is like not doing the Wheel of Fortune R S T L N E style. Yeah, thing. swing for the fences, see what happens. I'm like, if yeah, you throw if I find out that there's a, right, if I see a P in there, if I see a G, like that's that's pretty. Good. That's a huge. That's a competitive advantage too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pluto is interesting because that's that's a proper noun that kind of <laughs> yeah changes really, the game it is weird that pluto would have been but maybe they took maybe it became improper noun when they no. when they took away no, pluto from being so. a planet it's an old planet now i think you're not playing the official wordle <laughs> yes i am <laughs> Pull up the app again. It's Let me see word. the website. It's a, it's a word. It's just it's just fucking letter blocks. <laughs> You're cheating. I, I like Woodle. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, I want to know your your uh, history. What's your distribution history? I'm five five four. I was pretty proud of it until yeah. I used to be like that. No twos. No sixes. Mm -hmm. And then I got a six recently, and uh, it's humbling. It's humbling, and yeah. it's, it wasn't a proud moment, especially because I was, my goal, which is, should be your goal, is to get a two before a six, you know? Like, you want to hit the mm. promised land before you fail. I think, I mean, two is just, I don't see how two is attainable to me. Yeah, you got to get a little lucky. You got to narrow it down like Pluto, and then you narrowed it down to three words. But you would have had to get that, and then also I would have had to guess Mount first. But like Jesus, yeah. Grayson. Um, oh wow, look at that! Ignore that one. That was me sort of cheating for a TikTok video. I see. So I'm getting yeah eight threes, eight fours. That's good. I think four fives in a in a. <clears throat> and a six actually yeah. I, th I mean i think you just want to be in a position where you have more threes than anything else because i think yeah three, i mean that would be great yeah three really takes talent yeah because you're able to sort of navigate and see through the mm -hmm. looking glass and like be like okay if there's a u there and o goes here and figure shit out mm -hmm. yeah um but grayson somebody that works at headgum has gotten t like two i think three or four three times, times this week yes like, that's and insane like, yeah and like w after one yellow so it'd be like as if you like guessed i don't know um uh I can't even think of a word that has one yellow for mount. Um, um, yeah. Amends or something. <laughs> and it's like, oh, one yellow. Mm, mount? Yeah, got <laughs> it. Excuse Crazy. me? Crazy. No, you don't get to guess that. And he's done it multiple times. So yeah. it's, uh, it, you can't think that it's a mistake at this the, point. The dude's good. And I've never been more jealous in my fucking life. But yeah, threes are good. I, I tweeted today that if you get a four, you might as well not even share it. That's a non-score. It's like, I'm I'm breezing. There's nothing interesting about a four. I got a four today. I should know. Mm -hmm. It's fine. 
Four is just like the the last one you can get without being embarrassed. Yes. I think five, you're like, fuck, I'm mad. Six, it's just I like, gotta, I'll yeah. tell you what was interesting about the six was the fear of that last pull, knowing that if after that you will have failed the game. Yeah. And that's, an, that's a shameful place to be. I don't even know if I could. I, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Uh-huh. A full O for six. You know what's is that? I mean, that, I, in theory, that's in play. Like I got these like UNT words. Are there? Would there be like three other guesses I could have done before mount? Maybe. Like I could have done count. No, you you knew that the C wasn't around. Oh yeah, the C was out. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's uh. I keep vacillating back and forth between like. This game is a game of mostly skill to this game is a game of mostly luck to maybe it's a, some sort of combination of both. And that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah, I, th- I think that's I think it is a little bit of both. I think it's also interesting that you can only play once. He's like really cracked a code. It's like a, an antidote that, to something that we didn't know that we needed. Do you see that the article that Pyle sent that ref um, had that interesting fact that the the pool of words you can guess, like Pluto, and one time I guess Blook, which is book with an L in it for some reason, you can guess those words, but it would not be in the possible words that they could use. What do you? Oh, wow! How? Like, I've played that? some like off-brand Wordle just for practice and slash fun, and like the words that they use are like officially words, but like are so hard that I like would rarely get them. Like Fiverr oh. was one of them. It's like, okay, I so I guessed Fixer and Finer and Pfeiffer. It's like, no, it's actually Fiverr, which is technically a word, but yeah, it's like this, would never like get a it. Scrabble dictionary where you just yes. like put down any random, you're like, oh, I right. think clap is a word. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I guess technically, Classed. yes. Right. Um, but, if, uh, but if that happened on Wordle, people would be upset. Like Wordle specifically chooses words that are much more generally known. Like even the word null got some people upset. I see. So yeah, people are so it's it's luck, skill, and the guy made it easy. <laughs> yes, the guy is helping us out because he's getting like he's getting us to guess where most of us are winning the game. You know, and mm-hmm. it's just like oh, you won twenty two in a row, but it's the distribution that matters, obviously. Of course, does Jillian play? Yes, she does. Let's she's, does she ever get a two or? Uh, no, she's never gotten it too. Jill, Jill gets either sixes or sevens. Wow, sevens. <laughs> she That's truly really like the meanest thing I could have said. She's actually, she's good. She gets like, I think she mostly get, does uh, threes and fours. <laughs> seven. There is not even a seven. That's how yeah. I know you were lying. Um, yeah, no, she is good. Everyone I know plays now. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to feel like I'm the only one that hasn't gotten a two. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you and I both. I I guess now I just want to beat you to two. That's really what matters to me. <laughs> yeah. To get a two. I don't even know if I'd be able to go to sleep after that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I play in the morning. See, it sort of energizes you. But then if I got a six in the morning, I'd have to just go back to bed regardless yeah. of the day. It does I it does ruin your day if you if you do bad. There was a de- there was a day this week that I got five and I was just like my fucking my day's ruined. <laughs> I'm in a bad mood to start. Yeah, that's probably why you got five. Yeah. How about this for a risky change? Uh, if you guess a word that's not a word, it brings you to the next row instead of like, oh no, that's a free pass. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, instead of the shake. So it should penalize you when you guessed "book." That was a real word. Yeah, I was like, it was one of the ones where I was like on my fifth or sixth, maybe, or I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this word is. So like, I'm like, is this a word? I was like, and then it took it and it didn't really help. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I was just sort of guesstimating. And then I looked, it's like, it means like half blog, half book or something like that. Wow. That's fucking, can't believe they added that. Yeah. Somebody said that they were able to get whack because they used chasm, which is a word we recommended. That's good. That's very good. I should start following my own advice. That's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would really give you whack. Nice. <laughs> well, now I can't use yeah. it because they, they recently done one. Well, they could still do chasm. So now I have an opportunity to get it in one. Are you going to go uh, 
Pluto tomorrow or you're like, this is my chance. This is the best, most fruitful Pluto could have been. And it still wasn't good enough. I usually guess my first word based on what the word the day before was. Interesting. So today's was Mount. Yeah. So I could tomorrow theoretically you're going to do... guess like an EA word or something like that. Yeah. I think something like that. I probably wouldn't use a U. And it's never a four letter noun with an S at the end, I believe. I think yeah, I've been able to eliminate that. That that's smart because I w- there was a time when I was doing that just because I like basically couldn't think of a five letter word, but I wanted to right. like, but I Pears. wanted to like, yeah, <laughs> but I wanted, to, yeah, you know, you want to get those a couple of the consonants out, and you're just like, oh well, I'll fucking think of an S, I'll just throw, toss an S on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's take a break. Thank some sponsor and come back and actually answer questions. I right, guess, right, 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 right. This is not just a Wordle podcast. Yeah, we have to do other shit too. Thank you to. I don't would know you if be you okay with that? that hard? If a um, a friend of yours came to you and said, "Can we borrow your sperm for hmm. our child?" Would you be like, "No, I like I kind of want to save it for my children." Or would you be like, I, "Yeah, it doesn't matter. What do I care?" Probably depend on the friend. Let's say it was, I don't know, uh, Amanda, who you went surfing with. Oh yeah, I would definitely do that. You would give her. Yeah. No moral qualms it. about having a child out there that's not necessarily yours. No. And I think that would be nice because it would it'd make me closer with Amanda and I'd probably be close to her child. That'd be cool. Yeah. You'd be a half on all sorts. Yeah. But if it was someone I didn't think would be a good parent, if you asked me, I would no. be like, I don't think I, think I, could do I it. want to put <laughs> my bloodline in <laughs> on your the line. incapable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. I wonder if like something tragic happened and the child was killed. Would you like, would I feel guilty? Like, Ooh, sorry about that. I know you sort of went on a limb for me. <laughs> Left the old thing in the ocean. <laughs> Awkward. Let's do yeah. one more. Now that I know what the yeah. rules are. I would think we would all be sad, but definitely the way you're behaving now is, is a good reason for why I, I would go want. like this. Ugh. Ugh. So this like is gonna I sound... love Lucy sketch. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna sound random slash sad, but but you know how I went to the beach with your blood, your flesh, my and child, blood? your yeah, like, yeah, just this, yeah, one and the same. <laughs> and now, do you notice how it's just me here? So guess what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that awkward moment when the swell took my childish slash yours out to sea and gave him a low key Viking funeral. <laughs> I haven't been back to the beach in a minute, but he might have washed up totally fine. I wouldn't put it past the dude. He's a fucking, he's a Hurwitz through it's and after through. all. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fish, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> this is for our fifth episode of stuck where uh, yeah yeah we're stuck oh, emotionally good. in this case mm-hmm. yeah we have to write that by the way i think i would i would be okay with that too because it's like all the um kind of curiosity of having a child without necessarily any of the responsibility so it's like oh yeah. now i could see what my bloodline would look like but at the same time i don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to handle the feedings yeah. and the trials and tribulation totally. of raising a child it's like your neighbor getting a puppy you're like, oh great, or I can like play. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could play with this dog, but it won't, it won't really interfere with my life. I think I can say with great certainty that donating your seed slash sperm is literally the equivalent of a roommate getting a cat. <laughs> like there's <laughs> zero difference on a grand cosmic like I don't know. zoomed out scale <laughs> i guess if you zoom far enough out where nothing really yes matters, like zoom all the way out the we're like we're a, yeah we're a pebble yeah, we're all on a fucking right grand In cosmic that sense, map that will yes, it nothing completely matters. disappear one day right totally yeah all of our heroes mean nothing yes exactly um, blink of an I, eye on the cosmic timeline I do think no matter how you bring it up, if you, if people start saying that they want to donate cum instead of sperm or semen, mm, it's yeah. extra funny. It's like, yeah, you I went to a cum like, bank. Yeah. And <laughs> you can't I, give it. Then you disqualified yourself. I wanted to do. I wanted to give the gift of my cum to people that 
um, can't have children of their own. Sounds worse. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> At you that point, the, from my comb, <laughs> the, the sperm bank has to give you the DQ. I think yeah. they can't accept it at that right. point. Well, I mean, they might hear the the whole um, "you lost your kid in the ocean" type. Uh, the joke. joke that was a goof. And, that was a bit. That was a, that goof, was a yeah. locker room talk. <laughs> locker room talk. <laughs> locker room talk. God, it didn't actually mean that. Do you know anybody that's actually donated sperm for money? It's a very funny way of like raising cash, but I don't know anyone yeah. that's ever actually done it. No, I don't think I. I, I also don't. I'm, is how much cash do you even get for it? I don't think very much. Can't be very much, right? It must just be about like the 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 story. Yeah, the joy of getting seventy dollars to masturbate in an office. Yeah. Usually, you get in trouble for that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, what do we do now that we're at like near the forty minute mark and um we haven't taken our break yet? Do we need to take a break? We could just power through to the fourth question. Or we we should just do a break and then end because breaks are kinda chill. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well yeah, do you have anything you want to talk about on this break? Yeah, let's let's do a little breaky break. Um before we have to go. Uh I think oh, here's a funny thing that happened to me in basketball today. Oh. I play basketball <laughs> with a bunch of That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Basketball is cool, but the with problem With a bunch is, of 11 uh, year olds. Yeah. <laughs> At an elementary school. Uh, and nobody's really good, but I'm not really good either, so it works out. But everybody's, like, the locals there are all pretty cool because, you know, they play basketball and they're cool or whatever. Cool high schoolers, cool college kids. So I'm always trying to be a little bit cooler than I am. And today, uh, we were playing five on five, and somebody goes, What's the score? And I said, Instead of one, you're supposed to say ones if it's one one. You say ones or one up or one all. But instead, I yelled <laughs> onesies. <laughs> and nobody said anything, but I felt like such an idiot. I'm like, I can't talk the way I talk normally in this place. Because I would just be like, onesies, and that's fine. But for me to yell onesies in a, like a pickup basketball game. I wanted to run back to my car and drive <laughs> off a cliff. No one said anything the entire... No. I mean, no, they, they were, I don't know if... I yelled it, so people probably heard it, but I don't know if it registered to them that I was a wiener. God, that'd be so funny if as you were getting into your car, somebody said, good game, onesies. <laughs> I didn't fucking say onesies, dude. <laughs> for the rest of the... I said ones. <laughs> I said ones. Your nickname on the court is onesies. <laughs> I show up on the next day wearing a onesie. A wrestling singlet. <laughs> oh, man, that's sad. <laughs> Onesies. <laughs> As you twist your ankle and get a ball to the face. Oh, my God, what happened? Did you uh, twisty your ankle? People snickering. <laughs> Shut up, dude. It really freaking kills. Here, put this uh, packy of ice on it. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Oh, I wanted to say that we're still going... Thank you to Kyler for um, sending us that theme song. Yeah. And for reminding right. you to watch... Rome. Yeah. I told you to watch it. Didn't really mean much until Kyler mentioned it, though, right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> my tendonitis. <laughs> you hit my tendon. Is it feeling any better or just sort of status quo as you? It's keep? feeling significantly better from the time when I was doing absolutely nothing for it. Mm -hmm. So the brace makes it so it doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Because I can't do the painful motion. Every once in a while, I'll remove the brace and test her out. And that's when and you get in trouble. Yeah. It's a lot less significant than it was, but it's still around. But, you yeah. know, I went like, I went swimming this morning. Oh, wow. A nice little low impact exercise. That's good. With um, the brace. I removed the brace in the Not water. Not waterproof. No. Yeah. You wouldn't want to take this bad boy in the water. No. Nor should you. Wait, it's hardly fucking didn't... skin proof. I mean, it's falling apart and it smells nasty and it's only been like three days. Does that mean you didn't go... Um surfing weren't you gonna go surfing with jeff? i was gonna go surfing this morning with jeff but he bailed on me because the waves were too big so when do you get that text that's like by the way waves are too big i'm going back to sleep yesterday oh he texted me that yesterday afternoon oh they know that yeah far ahead. he's he's very reliable when it comes to surfing like when he says he's gonna pick me up at 6 a.m he's there at 6 a.m wow um yeah but today no go yeah the we were gonna go for a sunset surf on monday yeah um, but waves were too big, too big, canceled. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to go, uh, this morning. Yeah. Uh, 
too big. Two waves are too big. And then Cancel. how how big is too big? Like ten feet? No, uh, four to six feet. Four is too big. So you're looking for that one, two, or three. I mean, no, foot. I think four is. I think if if the surf report said three to four, I'd yeah. be excited. That's interesting. Good. And they could tell you yesterday if that wave is going to be four, or five, or six feet, or it's I kind of a guesstimate. It's kind of a guesstimate. It's like, and that's, and even then, there's still so many variables. That's like maybe a five foot wave. That's like a nice slow rolling wave right. with like a, a nice big uh, sandbar. You know, shoulder height, yeah. water all the way in. That'd be great. Right. But then there's like sometimes there's two foot waves uh, on a beach break that are just like crashing right on the shore. So you can't really surf that. That's why I'll never surf because I don't trust Poseidon, the god of the sea, to yeah. treat me with the reverence and respect that I need. For sure. I need a surface that will never change. Right. So I will play. I need a surface that looks calm and ready. <laughs> because on the surface, I look calm and ready. Exactly. To drop bombs. So I'll do table tennis. Yeah. You'll never see like, by the way, watch out. This table tennis is super sharp. Right. Today. Yeah. No, yeah. There's no variable. There's no, no variable. Change. There's actually no God that controls table tennis. Nor should there be. Right. Because Unless it's a game. You could become the the way that Poseidon is the God of the sea <laughs> and Zeus, the God of thunder. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. You could be the God <laughs> of table tennis. You imagine that Shmuel. The wow. god of table tennis. And what would I control? Because I feel like there's the, the not a lot of... Spin, <laughs> the top the, spin. The fact that sometimes the ball will nick the net uh -huh. and dribble over, yeah. and that's your point. Or Let. sometimes yeah. it'll hit the net Grace. and dribble back. Oh, interesting. You know? Dep I think that's, that's usually... A, <laughs> that seems like it's usually reliant on how hard you hit the ball and where. That's the type of shit that you would know as the god of table <laughs> tennis. Huh. Okay. That's really cool. I'm beginning to feel like a whack god. Whack god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but not like whack in a way that's bad. Right. Whack is You call just it a like, thwack god. That's pretty good. More yeah. Although if I could just choose what to be a god of, I feel like I, I stake you can't. my clip. <laughs> because I don't necessarily like ping pong that much. I feel like can I do it for something else? For what? I don't know, fucking basketball. No way. <laughs> you could do it for, for Mazda. <laughs> what? I feel like... A Japanese car company is yeah. going to hire me to be you their god. You could be god. the Mazda god. Like Mazda god. <laughs> yeah. A Zoom Timothy Zoom. Maz god. So I'm in charge of how fast these cars go. They're pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, throwing Toyota. I want to choose which Camry. I'm not going to give you that. Toyota because they make they they make the trucks, they make the Tundra, yeah. they make the Ford. I feel like those rugged <laughs> automobiles is not really some. I give you a Hyundai. It's not bad. So I get to choose which car is the. And I'd give you the... Daewoo. <laughs> which one's Daewoo? Daewoo is a Japanese car brand. Can you imagine me rolling up in a Laganza and people are making fun of me, obviously, because it's <laughs> kind of falling apart, right. and then they I say. You wouldn't be yelling mean things at me if you knew that I was actually the Daewoo god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll take it. No, other hand. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that actually did hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. No, it wasn't your fault. I twisted my hand to make it touch you. I don't know why I did that. Uh, all right, this is If I Were You, the only advice pod <laughs> on the web hosted by us. Uh, I'm Amir. I'm Jake, and I have tendonitis. And you can see it. We're what we're shooting this. We're back in the studio together. So we're it's another classic right. studio app. You can watch it on our YouTube channel. Wrist brace activated. I'm the tendonitis god. What if they wanted to put you in a cast? Would you do that, or would you no. say it's not worth it? It's not worth it. Got it. Would they suggest a cast, or it's not even that kind of problem? It's not that kind of problem. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. This is a guy who's wondering if it's too late to change something about himself. All right, let's find out. Uh, hey, guys. We'll call him uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Cool. Um, is it too late to change my handwriting? Everything about it is off. I hold my pencil wrong. It ends up hurting my hand. I write in a weird semi-cursive way. So my pen rarely lifts it from the paper, but I am writing print. My writing ends up looking rough and gross, actually. I'm starting a new school program soon and would like to look back on my notes and think this is nice instead of what child stole my notebook. Uh -huh. Please advice on how to change something about yourself that you've been doing since you were a young child. I'm 25 years old. Thanks. I'm floored that you care about your handwriting. 
Yeah, it everything doesn't come is up digital. A lot. Yeah, it's weird that like if high I were schoolers school- probably just type notes, right? Or I, do they still require you to write it just because that's I don't know. How you learn? That seems kind of crazy. I think if I were sending a high school aged kid to school, mm-hmm. I would probably, as a parent uh, sitting on the PTA, you know, be like, they should be allowed to type their notes. Oh, interesting. Because that's a much more relevant skill set to develop. But like, it's also like I bet there's parents are like no there's you you have so much more tactile like learning when you're actually writing shit down you right. learn it better more true or something yeah and then i would be like yes and and that's why your kid will be slower than mine because they will be a typing <laughs> speed demon <laughs> I'm he has the... a gun. <laughs> I am the god of tendonitis. <laughs> okay, he can use an iPad. Please. Uh, well, this is actually gives me an idea, which is there should be. We went to elementary school. Yeah, thirty years ago, we learned this shit, right. but we don't really use it anymore. So, like, there should be a handwriting sc- elementary school every thirty years. Like, I should be able to go back and like learn algebra. Yeah, I, I will never. Definitely like, forgot. I mean, when, we when forgot you, it all basically. When the in the rare instances instances where you actually have to write something down, yeah. do you find that it's like pretty hard? Yeah, pretty hard. Yeah, it's yeah. really it's weird. It yeah. feels weird. It looks weird. And I'm also bad at spelling when I'm writing stuff because I'm like getting ahead of myself. Right. You want to type it, and there's so much autocorrect that like I mean, in in elementary school or junior high, we used to write full essays by hand. Yeah. I haven't written a full page of paper probably in 25 years. Yeah. Which I think actually made for much worse essays because it's actually great to be able to like read what you wrote, realize that something is repetitive or something's dumb or it needs a setup line or whatever, and then like make edits. So you're not nostalgic for that time. Like, oh, I wish we'd do that again. No, no, I'm, I'm actually not. Interesting. If you seem to be like, you would be like a... Oh, I, I wish we would go back to that way. Everything's too digitalized. Style yeah. Person. I mean, no, I, I like, I, I don't know, a handwritten note, note or something. Right. But it does, I, there's not really, I'm, I also don't like clutter. So I do like to throw things away. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily like into handwriting notes. History is another thing we don't really, like we learned, I learned U.S. history in 11th grade. Okay, I forgot the fucking details in the last 25 years. Yeah. In my old age, I've, like, gotten into history again. So, you, like, yeah, I guess there's documentaries and stuff that adults do. Yeah, and I started buying history books. And really? Just like, reading. just like a textbook? Yeah, well, I also bought a Kindle recently. Interesting. Um, but, yeah, I, I bought a... I bought like I I was reading like you know all the history books that you're supposed to buy and I found one that is just like that truly starts at the beginning of starts time? at like yeah like seventy thousand years ago oh, yeah. when like the the people first left like the cradle of civilization and kind of spread out across like, the Lock, George the world. Washington shit like, uh, no that was old that was like three hundred years ago <laughs> no I'm yeah. saying like you know all that shit like, um, fucking well right now I'm sort of learning how people. Came came to England habit with like a kite, the Samoan Islands, and the key. Yeah, Not the key. I was saying even before that. Yeah, way yeah. before that. <laughs> this is like, like Columbus yeah. sailed the ocean, like twenty thousand BC. Yeah, yeah. eons yeah. before that. Like Jesus like, was a fucking. Not even 20,000 years ago. He wasn't even a god yet. No, He was just a dude. No, not a dude. Not born. (laughs) Not even close to being born. People's like skulls were just changing. I see. Yeah. This is like like, way, way, way. Like like Hunter Galileo level. Not Galileo who came after after Jesus. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But like fucking like the, the, the Hasmoneans fucking, yeah, like Greek fighters of 2000 bc level right. shit no this was like pre civilization <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you have a cold i think i do <laughs> saw a fly fly into your nose <laughs> it's laying eggs in your brain <laughs> and i'm learning that's how it works so anyway that's my tv show pitch idea is a, a new high school catered to 40 year olds you're it's learning a TV show, or yeah, a TV show. Interesting. So it's like we're not actually going to do this, right? Obviously, it's kind of insane, but yeah, high school too. Yeah, where every eighteen years you go back to high school to learn the shit that you did. Okay, sort of Billy Madison meets right. Clone High. Yeah, it's kind of interesting as a TV show. I mean, no one would go for it because mm. it's a little like high concept. Yeah, high concept but low brow, like one note, a little too one note. Yeah. 
sort of say by the bell the new class mm -hmm. wherein the kids are now in their 40s right only like zach morris is um a dad what was the question the what? How to change the, your handwriting? <laughs> oh, I don't fucking know. Take a calligraphy class or some there shit. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what you could learn in high school too. Yeah. Calligraphy. Yeah. This guy could be a producer on the show. Yes. Grammar rules. You remember grammar rules? I don't remember any of those rules. Um, yeah. What is a I remember. I remember. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. But yeah, I remember I remember the grammar. What other stuff. classes were there? There was history, chemistry is kind of chemistry, weird. biology, yeah. physics, yeah. Uh, <laughs> English. Yeah. yeah. You do the weird thing about I was talking to Jill recently about the idea of homework. I thought you guys were yeah, no, we're we're trying to work it out. She well, <laughs> I'm trying to work it out. She's not interested in seeing or talking to me. Didn't me now. Wow, wow. She doesn't return my calls or my texts. She doesn't answer my messages and my emails. I reached out to her dad. I reached out to her mom. I updated her sister. And they all blocked me. Yeah. But one of the last conversations we had, <laughs> I think the saddest thing we've ever done in 580 whatever episodes. What? The song. I hummed a tune. <laughs> it was awful. It was bad, but it was also <laughs> yeah, sad. Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we were talking about homework and like you would wake up for school mm. at seven. Yeah. You'd go to school all day. And Afterwards, you do like, you know, you do a sport, you go to practice. Yeah. You come home, you have to eat dinner with the family. Sure. And then it's homework. Homework. That is just a full, it's, yeah. that's such, it's so much time. Or reading. Yeah. Like, read the next two chapters. Like, I have to fucking do this math worksheet, and yeah. then I have to read a history textbook. Right. And reading the history text, that was actually the one that I brought up. It's like, you know, you're filling out a math worksheet, you're you're answering like a, you know, vocab quiz. Yeah. But then for history, it's just like, read 40 pages read of, 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 of a dense... boring ass book. Yeah. <laughs> You're 16. Like, you can play Madden, or you can read about the X Y Z affair. Yeah, I would, <laughs> God, I really, I literally never did homework. Really, I never did. It. So you show up on the day, everyone's handing in, and they're like, "Jake, your homework." Yeah, I would. I wasn't even. I was not even. I didn't even have enough like fucking drive to mm. copy it like the other bad students. Oh, I see. I would just not have it. You wouldn't have it. I would just be like, and oh, would your I don't parents be it. like, "Did you do your homework today?" Yeah, and I'd be like, "Yes," and they'd be like, "Let me see it," and I would like show them an old draft. Right, and they had six kids. They can't look. They can't. Keep they can't track. Get, yeah, they've got eyes on the homework. Yeah, but I was such a bad kid. Now that my such a bad now that my friends are having children, and seeing how hard it is to have two. Yeah. The fact that your parents had six should yeah. be illegal, I think. Yeah. Exactly. There's no possible way they could have done anything but feed you and clothe you. That's a full time job for both yeah. of them. Nonstop. Yeah. Absolutely Constantly thinking nonstop. your schedules. Just giving six people three meals a day for 20 years yeah. in a row. Impossible. It's, <laughs> it's really, so it would take three hours to create, feed, and clean. And mm -hmm. then you have to do it again for lunch right. and do it again for dinner. And then you go to bed. How could you possibly have any time to do anything else? Yeah. I mean, to have a 10-year-old and an infant at the same time. Impossible. With, you know, four-year-olds and six-year-olds in between. <laughs> yeah. Just absolutely, absolutely bonkers. They must have been so sleep deprived. But then your dad would also go to work and your mom had a job too? Uh, no, my mom was a full-time mom. Yeah. That's she the, couldn't that's have done anything job. else. No. It must have been very stressful, I bet. She became a teacher when Micah was... When everybody else had gone to college, Michael was in high school. Yeah. She then she's like, I'm going to go back to work. Yeah. If I was your mom, I'd be like, I'm never doing anything ever again. Right. I'm not, I'm like, Micah's 18. Yeah. I'm never she cleaning should, a She should have had dish. like a four, she should have like gotten cash <laughs> when all of us, when all yeah. of us went to college, when Micah turned 18 and That's we had right. all survived. Yep. She should have gotten a paid A. She should have given, you should have all been paying her $1,000 a month for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's actually true. I owe my mom cash for yeah. sure. <laughs> have you ever paid like for a drink for your mom or like a ticket or a meal or anything like that? I wonder. No, but when I'm you thinking, go home. I'm considering <laughs> getting her like a watch. <laughs> yeah. I might get her a fucking Garmin. <laughs> I'm really about to pull the Why'd trigger you like on a Tom Tom, mom, mom. <laughs> Huh? I use my phone for a ways and stuff. I can get you a Fitbit. 
a fucking corporate holiday gift for my mom. Yeah. For two I got decades. One, I got one from IAC in 2013. <laughs> and if you well, still have a micro USB. The charger doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but thanks for the whole feeding me every you meal and taking me anywhere. You installed with a CD, <laughs> mom. <laughs> oh, and dad, I got you a hat. <laughs> Choking on spaghetti that she made you. <laughs> dad, I, I, got, I got you a fucking hat. I got so, you a hat. It's a visor. <laughs> Your mom giving you a hat. Like, <laughs> Holy shit, I almost just died again. I do remember. Like, so many of us almost died. I remember. Of course. Like, yeah. Six of them. I remember, like, just hanging out in the in the dining room one day. Everyone's eating. And all of a sudden, Micah starts choking. My dad just like jumped over a chair, smacked smacked him on the back till he threw up. Yeah. Uh, Rachel also choked one time on wadded up toilet paper that she put in her mouth. Yeah. Micah wandered into the street, almost got hit by a car. Sure. Yeah. It yeah. seems like that's gonna happen a lot. It should happen a lot more. Like babies are fucking shoving full pieces of bread in their mouth. They Actively to trying to die for sure. Yeah, jumping into traffic. They don't know pain yet, so they don't get the consequences yeah. of life. To have that time six feels like impossible. Right. Anyway, shout out to this guy who should, I guess should take a fucking handwriting class. I'm sure there's TikToks about it or some shit. Yeah. What do you want from me? <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> okay. Now I'm all like mad. <laughs> yeah. It's not even your fault. You started mad, I think. Yeah, I was pissed off at the day. Yeah. We'll be back soon, guys. And we are back. Yeah. It's time for some <laughs> unsolicited. Oh, wait, how did I do it? It was like a uh, electric guitar riff. Unsolicited <laughs> advice. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to fucking come. <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> yeah, that one was definitely like. Don't walk in. I'm orgasming. Right. Well, I mean, I almost like mom. I'm gonna come. Like you're fucking your mom. Yeah. <laughs> no, it definitely felt that way too. Right, sweet. Like I can see why it was you'd misconstrued as that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've tiptoed around it recently. We've spoken to it about it. Uh, it's just trickled into the podcast. Because, if anyone follows you on social media, they know. Yeah, I, I can't get enough of it. My unsolicited advice is: if you've got some extra money lying around. Throw it into the cryptocurrency market. <laughs> I mean, it is a fucking bonanza in there. Yeah, you, know, you told me to do it. The... I've only lost $300 <laughs> well, so far. Well, so far, so far. It is the Wild West. There are swings, ebbs, and flows. My advice is not to put money that you can afford to lose. That's my way of getting out of it guilt-free. If you have money lying around that's literally doing nothing, that you'd like to pretty much gamble, that you'd be okay if it went away entirely. Right. $200 just vanished. Yeah. If For that's that, okay you, with you. You could buy a couple thousand yeah. Tron. <laughs> that's right. Oh, more than a couple thousand. <laughs> that crypto is just tanking. It is absolutely taking it. Should I stuff. sell my Tron? <laughs> <laughs> that... I would, I'm, I'm out on Tron. So this is basically the lowdown of it. What you can do is, if you're on the fence, you sign up for a Gemini account which is sort of coin coinbase was like the the myspace of it coinbase started it all off that's how i bought my first bitcoin Wait, i don't have Ge a gemini do i you do not i do not i don't even have gemini oh uh, gemini basically allows you to buy bitcoin and ethereum which are the big two cryptocurrencies uh, and you don't have to buy a whole one. I know you, what you're thinking. Bitcoin's worth over $10,000. I don't know if it still will be by the time the show comes out, but let's say it is. You don't have to buy an entire Bitcoin. You could put in $50, $100, and get a fraction of a Bitcoin. Right. Uh, once you have Bitcoin and Ethereum, should I even get into like what the hell any of this is, or that doesn't matter right now? Uh, I guess you could probably get into it a little bit. Why don't you, what, yeah, a light primer. <laughs> yeah, a light primer is every money... Uh, I guess I won't say every money, but pretty much all the money that I've ever heard of is attached to a government. Mm -hmm. So there's U.S. dollars, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, and there's an exchange between these, and you know that goes up and down. And the British pound, the euro, they all have, are uh, attached to a government. And one day, about eight years ago, somebody said, what, what if we just created money decentralized, not attached to any government? A completely digital cryptocurrency, which means it's like kind of anonymous. We don't know exactly who owns any of it. Uh, and people can mine it and create it and then use it to buy and sell, and the value of it will go up. That was Bitcoin. Uh, people heard about it, bought more. As people buy more, the value goes up because it's more valuable. Suddenly it becomes worth $1,000 for a Bitcoin, 5000 
I remember four years ago, five years ago, Streeter was telling us to buy it when it was like, it went from like $300 to $600. And Streeter was like, you guys got to get in on this. This, I don't know what the fuck it is, but it keeps going up. We bought a few. We felt really smart. We sold a few over the course of the years, or at least I did, because it went down or up. Um, and then in the last year, it went from $1,000 for a Bitcoin to almost 20000 Some people bought it when it was at 20000 assuming it would go up forever. Uh, then it went down to about 13000 uh, and that spawned other cryptocurrencies. It's not just Bitcoin. There's other ones. So uh, the big, I would say, big four are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. You don't have to memorize all this stuff. But you can buy some of this stuff. Uh, and you could do that with U.S. dollars on Gemini. And then what I did was I got deeper, delved deeper, because I knew there were other Bitcoins out there. I wanted to see, I wanted to buy the ones, because you keep hearing about these people like, oh, I bought a thousand Bitcoins accidentally when they cost 50 cents each, and now I'm worth $1.9 billion. So I'm like, what other, big, what other cryptocurrencies are out there that cost a few cents? And there are thousands, literally thousands, because any company can create a cryptocurrency. It's basically like IPOing, like creating a, a stock or right. joining the stock market. So but any company can do so it. You're basically buying penny stocks. Yeah, but with like a yeah with with a um a precedent for <laughs> one of these penny stocks like absolutely skyrocketing <laughs> yeah and making you a billionaire exactly and uh, unfortunately as it's you know roulette with an enormous table yeah but as you know when there's the possibility of scamming idiots out of their money a lot of people just create fake ones that are not attached to any company. Uh, they buy a lot of it, so the price goes up. And then idiots like me are like, oh, this one went from one cents to five cents. So I'm going to buy 25,000 of them. Do you know which ones that happened with? Because I bought all the ones you told me to, so you got to <laughs> tell me when to sell them too. Well, there's one that somebody bought. Somebody started Dogecoin, D-O-G-E coin, uh, basically as a joke, being like, this shit is meaningless. Nobody should buy any of this stuff. And then people started buying Doge coins just to prove how dumb it was. And now Dogecoin, the total value of it, um, is like in the billions. Everyone's like, see, like this coin, which isn't even worth anything. It doesn't even do anything. People are buying and selling it. Uh, and if you multiply that amount by the amount of Doge coins there are, it's over a billion dollars. It doesn't make any sense. None so of this makes any as sense. As a joke, this guy created a billion dollar. <laughs> Why don't we create a fucking cryptocurrency? cryptocurrency? Yeah, we can. We can create a, a headgum one, and then you can own part of headgum. And then, so some of these coins are attached to actual companies with great teams behind them who are doing awesome things. Like I read about one called the Gollum Project, which uses latent computer processing power from around the world to help other people. So, like, you use your computer for email and that's it. You're not using 90% of your computer processing power. And uh, there's a guy in uh, India that wants to render animation and he can't do it because he his computer is old. So it's like, what if he can tap into the latent unused computer processing power from around the world to help him render animation to Jesus do stuff. Jesus Christ, how so, is that possible? It sounds like a superhero movie. <laughs> it's, it sounds like very lofty and ambitious and awesome, and they created a cryptocurrency to help fund that. Um, so you can invest in that. And then there are ones that are like, wait, what is this guy doing? This thing already exists, but you know, there's like scam coins, shit coins, they call them on the Reddit. So oh, you want to look to avoid those. But even those can be profitable because those also quote unquote moon, which is like when they become worth ten to fifty to a hundred times their current value. So your advice isn't specific to like invest in this one and not this one invest like your yeah, advice I is can't just give like get Gemini and get in the game. Yeah, I'm saying if you have some money to to, to, to tinker with this, because uh, if you're kind of like a numbers stats nerd like me and you're kind of in you like you have a fantasy football team but that's in the off season. This is kind of like a fantasy a uh, football game that never ends because the market, unlike the stock market, is twenty four seven. This is so it never. You, really you go to appeal sleep. to like all of your <laughs> interests. Yeah, and it's, it's scary gambling. Because it's math. And you it's go to cash. sleep. <laughs> you go to sleep and you wake up and the numbers are completely different. I'm like, unless you fucking set an alarm for four a.m., you have no idea what to do. And then you can get even deeper in the weeds and like set like set buy and sell orders for like 
if the if a like let's say you bought Tron for example, let's talk about Tron for a second. I have no <laughs> idea if anybody will find this interesting. Tron is a coin. This is the less unsolicited <laughs> advice segment we'll ever do. Is it a coin called Tron that many people are uh, accusing the owner of uh, basically creating something out of nothing? They it was a coin that was worth three cents per coin, so people were buy a lot of it, and the price would go up. That's what happens. If people buy a lot, the price goes up, supply and demand. So they're accusing rich people of just buying it up so that Tron went from 3 to $0.11. Cents, and then everyone starts talking about it. What's this coin that like tripled over the course of a night or two? Like We should buy that. And then as people do that, the price went from $0.11 cents to $0.30. Cents. And then the rich people who moved it from $0.03 cents to $0.11 cents just tripled their actual money because it went from 11 to 30 then all those rich people sold the Tron, they made their profit, and it left a bunch of idiots who bought it at 30 cents, and now they're holding a coin that's worth 11 cents. And nobody fully really understands, or I shouldn't say nobody, because I'm sure there are certain nerds that do, but the vast majority of these bro uh, crypto traders don't really know what Tron does. They just look at the numbers and the price point. Like, I want to buy something worth three cents because what the fuck, it's worth it. And some of those people are right, unfortunately. So they're like, I bought it at three cents and now it's worth 20 cents. And look, I'm a fucking genius because I turned a thousand dollars into seven thousand dollars. And that's why it kind of feels like the wild, wild west because even the wrong people are right sometimes. So there's multiple ways to play the game. You can like try to follow these shit coins, quote unquote, and see if they can double, triple in value and sell it right away. Or you can invest more money into the the teams that like like that golem thing that i found there's probably 10 15 20 of those like really reputable ones that don't necessarily go from three cents to 40 cents because nobody's pumping and dumping this and the chilling real world, it. man the bad guys yeah. always win <laughs> that's the, the dude in india is never register r- rendering his fucking animation but th- this you remember i'm all in on shit yeah. coin. <laughs> that's a new one actually remember <laughs> we can we can start one called shit coin just embrace it completely that's kind of what dogecoin is but remember litecoin uh you bought it at like 80 dollars for something like two months ago yeah litecoin sort of like the silver to bitcoin's gold they call it don't entirely know what that means but you bought it around 80 uh and for whatever reason people really liked it maybe because it was the cheapest one you could buy on Coinbase and uh, it seemed more affordable. And if you thought you can't afford a full Bitcoin, you could just buy Litecoin. And that went from $80 to about $350 in like three weeks. Everyone looked like a genius. Just buy Litecoin. It'll go up forever. Litecoin eventually devolves. But Litecoin was worth $4 uh, a year year ago. That's crazy. So I'm like, what if I can find the next Litecoin, but instead of buying eight of them, I'll just buy 10 fucking thousand of them. Well, but then you day trade everything, so you're, you could... But don't... Uh, I'm, you don't necessarily have to day trade. You just... Like you said, roulette, just put a huge bet on one thing and hope that it goes from $4 just, to 400 I guess that's what I did with Bitcoin. I didn't even know if I still had Bitcoin when it went... Right. When it skyrocketed the second time. Like, we bought it... We bought one or two when we should have bought just, like, 80. I don't know why we didn't buy 80. Because... Well, like six years ago, I don't think I had more than five hundred dollars <laughs> to spend on it. Right, that that makes sense. Don't again. It sounds exciting, or maybe completely not, and I lost you. But don't be willing to put in uh, what you can't afford to lose. Because again, this we record this on Friday by Monday. Everyone might realize that this is all going to shit. Oh yeah, which seems to happen once a week that everyone just starts selling off everything because they're like. Holy shit! I've made real money, but I only I've only made real money if I sell. So I'm just gonna sell, sell, sell. Prices go down. Everyone's like, shit! I gotta sell now before it's back down. But to then zero. they're like, oh wow, I can get into this. And yeah, then like all the new, the new. <laughs> you know, you never know. We'll it's see. a cycle. It's a cycle. But uh, if uh, if you have that same, you're just telling people to get in this game so you're to drive up the price of Tron, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you want to buy a specific crypto, so then I buy. Advice, <laughs> buy Tron so I can fucking sell. <laughs> yeah, it's called shilling. So every time you own a coin, you speak very highly of it, and everyone just accuses you of shilling. But it's it's kind of like this self fulfilling prophecy because if you have a coin, you want people to buy it, so you rave about it, and then if you're raving about it, then more people buy it. More people rave about it. But like, what's there? The only way you can't like rave about it is like literally a currency, right? It's not like I would. I'm just going around raving about Icelandic kroner, right? Yeah, like but, oh, you should really <laughs> buy. You should only use kroner. It's better. Yeah, pretty much. But like, what what makes Ryblox better <laughs> than Tron or uh, Navcoin better than Poet? <laughs> as far as I know, I don't know. 
but you can't be like, I think oh, Nav dude, coin, you, you got to get out of poet. And like the only thing you could, the only way you can rave is by saying like that one's tanking, this one's going up, right? But or like, you, you can say this one's actually useful in the real world, which is like some people are just buying and selling to make money, and some people are like, no, you don't understand. Navcoin is free, instant, transactionless. Like uh, it's the it's what Bitcoin was meant to be, and I fully believe we'll all be on Navcoin soon. So I'm buying it now. Like spiritually and philosophically, I'm like aligned with this company. And other other people are like, if it doubles, I'll sell it and move to Japan. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it does, uh, but it's a fun game nonetheless. Anyway, tweet at me your altcoin rex uh, and let us know if this is completely boring to you. Uh, well, next because, week it'll be different unsolicited advice. No, it'll just be more crypto shit. All right. Well, I quit the podcast. Of course. <laughs> uh, and if if it if it does go well, I'll just spin off, lock myself in a room, and start a five hour long daily crypto podcast. Because every four minutes, the landscape completely changes. Uh, did you have any unsolicited advice, or was that enough for both of us? I think that's good for both of us, and then maybe I'll go next week. That's good. I also don't have any, so... What about our shows, our live shows in Canada? Thank you, days? Peter. Um, I wanted to start this episode by addressing some nasty allegations about the last episode. Um, <laughs> really? You brought this to my <laughs> top of mind, and... Um, yeah, it was basically. I don't know if you. Well, let's. You're, we're talking. You, you're talking about. We're talking about Fartgate here. Yeah. Well, I don't want to use that term, but yeah. I just. I guess listen to this clip in which Josh is talking, describing his film, and then you hear this noise mm-hmm. in the background. But the scariest uh, tale of all is. Uh, uh, is. <laughs> right. So that was like. Uh, that was. I don't know if you oh heard God. that. But that was like sort of this. This noise <laughs> yeah, of a chair, or like door it, creaking open, no. or a, a tongue. That's a fart that echoed around the world right. that many people actually brought to our attention. It was on Twitter. It was on Reddit. <laughs> people were curious if we heard it and why it happened. Right. How it got in and ye- to the. Episode. So this the um, the noise was from me farting, but the whole like drama around it was the fart was from you farting (laughs) you farted there was this witch hoax (laughs) that sort of surrounded and clouded the whole episode and i feel nasty to josh for having him on and then only to have one of us do that to him (laughs) yeah regardless of who it was during during the we asked him to come on the podcast and during the one (laughs) the one minute where he gets to promote i took that as a green light a brown light actually to sort of Cut the cheese, as you it were. You ripped out. Yeah. <laughs> you passed wind. You broke wind. So I was able... And you passed We gas. record this on a Zoom, so I can mute myself right now, you know, and fart and then come back. Yeah. You can't hear it. But what I forgot was that the mic that I'm recording into, I don't mute that. That just went straight are, into the episode. Right. <laughs> and these are pretty directional mics, so that really had to be... It had to rip a little Yeah, these mics, like yeah, they're made to pick up only like what's in front of I farted while we've been recording... And it's never picked up. Like that sound, you really, you pushed that out. I needed to have that out of me. And when it came out, it was, it was good that it did, but unfortunate yeah. timing. So I just wanted to address that we're sorry, you and I, about... What do you mean we are sorry? Well, you, you're the, you you're the face of the pod. So what, you muted yourself. I didn't even know that was in Everything there. I, I can do, you can happen. do wetter. So at this point, Jake, I'd like you to... Put your ass to the microphone and let's hear a good old fashioned shart. And while you're doing it, I'm I'll not say, what's that? I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I can't. I'll try it. I did. <laughs> it was a really, really tiny. That was so <laughs> offensive. That was so rude, <laughs> what? actually. You asked me to do it. I asked you with a capital <laughs> ass and you did. And now we're both sorry um, for having said that. But yeah, I guess... Yeah. Which hoax over, it was me, I admit to it, or whatever, so... <laughs> if you admit to it, then it wasn't a witch hoax. <laughs> this is the most turdy thing you've ever done in the entire run of this podcast. You literally sharded on <laughs> the episode. Shart. This is how rumors get sharded. <laughs> I, I passed wind. I had trapped gas. And honestly, it would be more offensive if you asked me to keep that in during the... No one's asking you to keep it in. Well, dur- keep it in during josh's pitch for his film 
during this one time to promote. What I should have done was cut it out of the edit, on our show. including cutting it out of my ass. So, like, if I were to cut <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, you definitely could have done. Yeah, that. I should have cut it uh, in post as well as through my colon. So, I guess mm-hmm. I'm sorry, and let's just put to bed the mystery of this. Honestly, I don't even know if I did it. And at this point, I'm like starting to think like I was I'm <laughs> wrongfully accused. You said that you you said you did it. You explained how it happened. You said you muted yourself and not it your ass. It was a chair. You've said all this. It was a chair. Now you're back. I really think I stepped on a cu- a cushion of whoopee. <laughs> you think like I mailed you a whoopee cushion? This is all my. Fault, I think right? so. I think you mailed me a cushion pl- of the whoopee variety, and I took advantage of it during an inopportune moment. So I wanted to take this time, and we wanted to apologize to everyone. Um, you know what? I am sorry for anybody that had to listen to it. I'm sorry that everyone, for anyone that had to listen to it, too. So thank you to both of us for apologizing. <laughs> I think it takes right. a stronger man to bring it up, which I did, and kind of a coward dick move <laughs> yeah. to throw me under the bus at the end there. But... <laughs> So okay. it goes, I guess. You barely brought it up. You called it a witch hoax. I am <laughs> applying for an externship at Coca-Cola. So I wanted to make sure that okay. my record was absolved so that I could <laughs> do social media internship deals. So you deals. could work for Coke? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. During the pandemic, they're looking for social media externs to sort of pitch for free hashtags that can be used in future contests <laughs> interesting so if you, if have, you one, have any let me know do i one? don't have one no so you but i wanted to get one. ahead of the, the fart thing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly okay you want to work for coca-cola coming up with hashtags <laughs> you haven't thought of one yet but you're covering your bases by apologizing for the fart heard around the world on your show just in case they reach out after reading your app. Is that what's going on? I think we're caught up. Yes, I think we're finally ready to start. Throw me one hashtag. Throw me one hashtag for Coca-Cola. Just, I feel like you have to be... Yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of, like, super back-of-the-envelope, rushed, okay. rushed situation. Right, so I wouldn't... I will, I just want to hear kind of, like, where your head's at. I'm not even asking you to, like, tell me, you know, what you want to pitch, because, like... Yeah. I understand you'll you'll probably put some work in for the actual <laughs> application. You'll eventually, I'm sure. This is like there's you know, send yeah, just it's called just your favorites, like open sky or whatever. Like there's no bad idea <laughs> yeah. situation. Blue yeah, sky, a blue, blue sky, sky brainstorm. brainstorm. Yeah, exactly. Like let's just start. We want to get some pen to paper, and there are no bad ideas yeah. at this point. That's no where bad I am. Ideas. So. Right. Like, it's almost a good idea if one of these are stupid, unless you like one of them, right. and then we could sort of pitch. Um, that it could work, then we'll workshop yeah. it, yeah. But just like just to get us started, throw out some of, this, some of the <laughs> hashtags that you've been thinking of for Coca-Cola. <laughs> I must ash you a summer. So it's like, if, you know, Mo- Movember? I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah so this is i mustache you a summer and it's like i don't know how it would even tie into coke is what i'm saying <laughs> like it doesn't make sense but basically you would have to i must ask you instead so instead of a like i must ask you a question is i guess the, the i pun. guess yeah but not even really but you said i must ask you, you a, summer. a summer so that's like a pun on a pun it doesn't make sense but it would basically be like you grow a mustache in honor of Coke, which again, nobody would know what the <laughs> fuck that even means. And then they could potentially put some sort of like sweepstakes under the labels, which they would need years to plan, let alone execute. <laughs> so there's no, there's not even a point to bring it up. Um, but I did. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> you're, Thoughts? You're working against <laughs> yourself through the pitch, too. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you're. I'm starting to backpedal where I feel like I'm being attacked. So, like, yeah, you're hedging. It's like it's self, self-defeatist. Yeah. But, yeah, no, that is bad because, like, <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's, it's not really even a hashtag. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. 
it's a bad idea for like anything. I don't know, some kind of camp. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Even for but, Movember. As you said, this is all. It doesn't make sense. Well, Movember. Movember, it does. It does. That's make true. Because then they could use it over the summer as like. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Like they would be like, I must ask you a summer. And then it's like. <laughs> We get like, who's the most famous person? <laughs> now I feel like I'm excited because we're talking about it. Like it's a real thing. But who do you think is the most famous person with a mustache? Tom Selleck or Mario or some shit? If we have him as like the face <laughs> of this campaign and it's like introducing, we do so, like this, yeah. shut up for a second. We do this like masked singer style <laughs> oh reveal God. where like this guy is like coming soon. So like banner ads, I'm talking billboard placements, tease the whole thing out, right? So you spend most of... <laughs> What day is it? It's March 22nd tomorrow. <laughs> Happy birthday to my brother. Yeah. But like first day of spring, boom, we hit him with like huge, sweeping, cryptic Times Square placements of like, he is coming, he is here, the end is coming, whatever yeah. like that. And then the it, end is on coming? Cinco de Mayo, we unveil this Tom Selleck, not Tom Selleck, but like someone like that with the someone hashtag, like I must ask you a summer. <laughs> or it can even be Mark Summers. <laughs> And then the whole season, the whole reason for wait, this sorry, thing. Sorry, wait. It could be Mark Summers who doesn't have a mustache. He would grow one for the... Now you're pivoting to the, the, the pun being summer. Like, so what would that be? Mark Summers with no mustache, the host of Double Dare, says, I mustache you a summer. Right. No. How, yeah. Yeah. And isn't... Not, not to be labor. get too far away from it, but this is... This is all, you're pitching like a Times Square billboard campaign. You're pitching like a huge deal. fucking deal. And it sounded like this is just an externship <laughs> where you come up with hashtags. Yeah. So I feel like you're getting, this is all kind of grandiose for what your role for Coca-Cola would even well, yeah, be. Yeah, which would basically like, ostensibly be an administrative Brand thing. ambassadors. By the way, Mark Summers, Tom Selleck, and Mario <laughs> were your three ideas. So I don't think they'd want you to. Because right. they're all kind of like a little older, maybe canceled at this point, personality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not super relatable to like Gen Z. So many people probably don't even know who Mark Summers is. Right. I wonder if we can almost do like this TikTok thing where we're using like a younger celebrity. But that's... Now we're getting away from the heart, the crux of this campaign, this application. Which was bad. Yeah, which is bad, exactly. Which is bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, I mean, doing something for TikTok sounds like it's it's closer oh, really? to... Interesting. Yeah, like a TikTok, some kind of TikTok campaign would be more... Do you mind if I... I, I could imagine. Do you mind if we beat that out for a second? I... You know what? I feel like at this point, we're like 15 minutes into the show, all we've been talking about are like your farts and your <laughs> internships or externships, <laughs> externship sorry. yeah because i would do it from home <laughs> i tested positive so they don't want me near the uh world of coke they don't want me traveling first of all and they don't want me they don't want me there right they don't want you so so i'm sorry because you said they don't want you traveling they don't want you there and you're doing it from home does that mean you did get the job do you have the externship <laughs> I applied for an internship and they asked to see my negative result. What I sent was the positive result and they said that they didn't want me near the facility. I asked them if I pitched a legit A plus winning <laughs> campaign, could I turn it into an externship? They haven't replied. <laughs> <laughs> now we're caught up. Okay. Okay. And Can you I want to beat out your TikTok thing? <laughs> well, I feel yeah. like it was your idea, unless you'll give it to me or gift it to me, or if I have to pay for it, I will. It's, so far, the idea is just that Coca Cola is more likely to do a TikTok thing <laughs> than a mustache campaign with Mark Summers, Tom Selleck, or Mario. So I don't even. This isn't an idea of mine. <laughs> I have no ownership of the idea. All I've done is steer you away from a really bad idea mm. into okay kind of like a different leaping off point so you know it's all it's all yours whatever you want to okay do. let me take that That's and run fine. with it after record okay and then i'll hit you with some 
like I don't you're not you don't need to after definitely don't hit me up after like i don't want to be involved in yeah this. you're already like i was thinking you're roping me in by right if i if i yeah. gave you like five like powerpoints would you be able to give me like five powerpoints? would you be able to give me like little constructive feedbacks with that like having that in mind like would you be able to give me like if this is the, even the right direction i should be going in like right off the bat, the time selling thing does not work. <laughs> it sounds like you know that also. <laughs> but right? you, I like, needed to hear that. Yeah. Like when you're alone in a room, okay. I feel like sure. I'm going crazy writing shit down, trying to figure if it out. If you just want me to like yes or no five different ideas, as long as it's five different ideas and not five different PowerPoint presentations, I'm down to just be Great. like, yes, that's cool. Perfect. All right. They might be okay. PowerPoints just because I feel like I have to explain what the I, I can't just give you a fucking log line and have you say yes or no to that. I have to like explain could, it to me. When you said you actually can because you said I when you said I must ask you a summer, I knew right that away was only the hashtag that was only the log line. Yeah, it's obvious, but that was a no right at first. Make, couldn't make that turned into and it was some still a no. <laughs> okay, no, it I thought it turned into a pretty good the TikTok idea. Right, but that wasn't like I see that I yeah 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 it didn't have anything to do with the idea. I see, I know? see, I see I, that. Okay, all right, um, awesome. Thank you. That was so cool. Um, <laughs> I think that's our that episode. Just because I want to get to work. How really? long has this been? About an hour ish. Twenty minutes. No, mm. less than twenty okay. minutes. You know, like let's keep it. All right, let's um. I feel bad ending it here, but uh, yeah, yeah. all right, let's keep going. No, don't <laughs> waffle on that. Yeah, we have to. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, this is if I were you, and let's try not to like phone it in. Yeah. Uh, as if I were you, advice don't podcast. Like, speed through it. Don't rush through it. Yada yada yada. You've all been straight. there before. Coming up Fake with name. This one is coming uh, up with hashtags for Coca Cola is such a low low priority or it should first be. email. Um, I'm interested. I can I send you one of your packages? Thank you, Walmart. Uh, what do you think? Sounds good to me. Sounds that good to you. You're reading right. your spam. Let's take a <laughs> reading your spam. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Let's let's take a break. We'll come back and actually answer some real questions. All right. I'm not gonna phone it in. I'm not gonna fart during the show anymore. I'm just gonna <laughs> be a normal guy with a normal job who's not looking for unpaid, by the way, externships. I already I have a job. <laughs> My job is to yeah. do this. I should focus on that. Oh, by the way, awesome. I just heard back from Coke, and I am, yeah, I, I'm i doing an externship. There. How? I soft-pitched them this, like, half-baked idea, the, and they kind of... The TikTok one? I, I emailed, I, no, I just chatted uh, something to, like, the Coca-Cola Facebook. Um, it was the TikTok, yeah, it was, like, the TikTok That was our, That was our um, idea. Only, so tell them it was from us, so that they could hire both of us. I feel like two heads are better than one. If it's an unpaid I feel like externship. they only really need one person. It's an it's, unpaid. It's like a whole mustache thing. It's I mustache so it's like, you a summer? <laughs> that was my idea. Yeah, but we're going to do it on TikTok. You wanted to... You wanted to make it like a fucking hashtag. I wanted to announce it as a hashtag. It's bigger than a hashtag, buddy. <laughs> it's bigger than a hashtag. Of course it's bigger than a hashtag. I don't think you get Mario, Selleck, and Summers yes. all together yeah. to do a fucking hashtag. And you wanted to make this a small idea, and that's the kind of Coke. Honestly, that's Pepsi thinking, bud. That's, pe that's the way Pepsi thinks. If you want to go work for RC, yeah, you can do that if you want, okay? I work for Coke, and you're a well, joke. This is crazy we have video photo audio evidence of me pitching this idea you stealing it using it and getting hired you have an unpaid externship from it now and i have nothing to show for it save for another two at two acts of this fucking podcast which is starting to ruin my life first the fart incident secondly this <laughs> job opportunity that was come and gone give me one good reason i shouldn't fucking end things right now <laughs> Because you're really, really going to want to be part of my campaign. I actually have a couple low-level <laughs> staff positions to help with the the viral rollout of this thing. Selick needs an assistant. And you get to, you can work on set with Selick, with Summers, with the Mario animator. Uh, and you get to save your lunch receipts. So that's not Save bad. them to be reimbursed later? Maybe. <laughs> 
or just save them for a fucking summer full of good memories on the I Mustache You a Summer campaign. Signed by Mark Summers, signed by Tom Selleck, signed by the guy who voices Mario. It's a me. Yeah, I'll take it. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know if you can teach someone to be funny. I think you can. I think being around funny people helps because you learn a cadence and a rhythm. I think that people can be funny around other people, funnier, don't you think? Yeah. Or by the way, maybe you find someone that has your sense of comedy. Like you guys fit very well together, but you guys by yourselves are terrible. Awful. Like no, I haven't seen one of you guys make a real watch. Say say something together. Just do anything together. Like a two man little bit. Yeah. No, just talk to each other. That's all it takes. Okay. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Fine. That's you? good. Yeah, I'm good too. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, I guess you guys aren't really that funny. <laughs> well, right. that, that wasn't funny, but... Okay, we... so say something funny. Do something Watch. funny. Okay. All right. Well, you give us a suggestion. Uh, Cap and Crunch. Okay. Pass. Let's no. get one more. Yeah. Any other suggestion? No, with each other. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Jake, you're uh, selling Amir a laptop. That's I would funny. never. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. It would be more like you selling me. <laughs> Let's do you selling me Captain Crunch. Okay. All right. Hey, Captain Crunch for sale over here. Who wants one pouch? Oh, I thought this was a laptop. <laughs> That's, funny. That's funny. That's <laughs> funny. You haven't even, you didn't let him. You said yeah. one sentence. All right, all right, all right, all right. Funny. Sorry, sorry. Hey, right. Captain Crunch here. Who's got a pouch? Or is this a laptop store? What? Sorry, <laughs> you're stepping on my line. <laughs> right, you're, right. you're trying to do this scene alone. No, no, no. I can do it with you. Do hey. be a two person team. All okay. Right. So you're, you're, you're hey, Captain rolling. Crunch here. Captain Crunch here. Who wants to come in? Oh, don't say it's a laptop store. That's my line. Uh, yeah, I order. <laughs> and then Jake. This is so <laughs> right. You're stealing the scene. No, I'm not stealing the scene. I'm is doing Jake? Let scene. Jake say something. Let Jake initiate. Okay. I'll start the scene. So I'm here. You're not Just allowed say to talk. Hi, and then I'll take no, there. no. Jake, you say whatever you want, and okay, then when okay. you're done, point to Amir so he knows when you're done. All right. Uh, Jim, I've had enough of that wait, already. Stop. Let him. I got a catch a grunch for sale. One pouch. You come in here. It's not a fucking laptop store. If you do, you're gonna get a knuckle sandwich. You are the only person turning into this laptop store. Sorry. Jake, say your sentence. Okay. Jake is crying. <laughs> I can say it. I can say what he was. You don't say. say anything. I won't say anything. You're playing a mime. Okay. Okay. Uh, catch a grunch doesn't sound like that. I got that. a catch a crunch store. <laughs> All right, go. All right. Uh, I got a Captain Crunch. <laughs> Mimes right. don't talk. I'm practicing. For what? You're not supposed to talk. I know, but when we're done, we're going to do it. All right, go. Bit. Jake. I'm going to say it, yeah. Don't. Okay. Don't say it. All right. Uh, mm. Gee whiz. <laughs> Come on. He's making noises. Ah. Hachoo. Hmm. Gee whiz, I'm hungry. Oh, Who? gee whiz. You got a <laughs> Captain Crunch pouch over here at the oh, Santa laptop God. store, and I'm not going to say anything, because you know why? Because I'm a fucking mime, you bish. All right, go. So how do you learn how to be that funny? I mean, just find one funny friend and get <laughs> team rolled. <laughs> uh, I think it's about surrounding yourself with funny people, practicing your crap. You get or is it the uh, opposite? Smarter, you get quicker. Surround yourself with unfunny people so that the mediocre rises to the top. In the land of the blind, the man with one eye is queen. <laughs> okay, so I agree with Jake. I think surround yourself with funny people. Do the things of that course. do the things that you find funny if you want to be funny. I don't know if reading a book, I think it becomes a little te technical, right? Yeah. We have transitioned two from... Two dudes hanging out. Yeah, yeah. We're two guys in the same room. Woo! Are yeah. you have, do you have a problem with me? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that we, we transitioned away from TV jingle-ish intro songs to like full musical songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I we can start TV... drifting back yeah, to 15, 30 seconds. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah. TV have you, musical. Have you been watching the new Game of Thrones show? I watched the first two episodes. I hear they just used the Game of Thrones theme song. Yeah, the first episode, I don't think they did. The second episode, they did. That seems illegal. Why? It's the Game of Thrones. It's the Game of Thrones. It's not though. Yes, it is. There, it's a new. Isn't it a prequel? Like, there's no of the same characters. The game is the same. Yeah, the game is the same, and it's the same houses, the same families. I so, just think that they're know. cheating by saying, "Oh, here's the same theme song." So, like, it almost tries to trick the audience into thinking this is just a kind new of. Game but of I mean, there, I mean, then you could say that about literally every aspect of the show. Like, they're they're sitting on the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. They're in King's Landing. Is it called like Game of Thrones colon Dragon Soup? I think it's called House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. So yeah. Game of Thrones is not in it. My, yeah, I don't think so. So they can't use the theme song. What are you, what are you fucking... <laughs> don't hold my hand. Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're on the same page finally about that. Or not.
Because I was like, I don't watch Game of Thrones, and I heard Avital watching, and I was like, dun, 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 dun. I'm like, oh, is this Game of Thrones? She's like, it's, no, it's like the new Game of Thrones style. I, show. They're doing that. Yeah, they're try they're trying to like earn that like you know. Um, they want to hit. They want to hit the fan in the heart. It's like, oh, here's here's that show you love. Don't yeah. worry, it's the same. But it actually, you know, I feel like that that theme song was also triggering because season eight was so bad. So now it almost so, makes it. it did yeah, the opposite. we're trying to. They're erasing um, a mistake. It's like if Better Call Saul used the Breaking Bad theme song. Yeah, which I think rightfully, if they wanted to, they could. It just doesn't feel right. You don't even like the show. I don't need to like it to yes, weigh in <laughs> as a critic. And I had some notes on episode one. Like I didn't know any of the characters. <laughs> Which is fine because they're new. But at the same time, I felt like I was being left out in the dust. Did you watch episode one? No. Did you? Did you like it? I didn't love episode one. I thought it was like a, it was a weak impression of Game of Thrones where um, they did a little bit of that like gratuitous violence just to be like, hey, this is that crazy show. Edgy. Yeah, but they didn't really set up enough. They didn't set up the characters enough to make me feel like anything for it. It just yeah. felt like kind of gross. But episode two, uh, it started to. Episode two was interesting. I heard episode three gets even better. So There's also a Lord I'm of the Rings board. show. I haven't watched that yet, but I want to. Jill's making me watch other shit. Interesting. It's like we're I like can we watch Lord of the Rings and she's like no we have to watch Pachinko. What's it's, that? It's a <laughs> tale of South Korea and Japan in like the 1950s, 1980s and today or some version of that or maybe it's like the 1910s, 1950s, 1980s. Yeah. Um and it's really beautiful, way way more like meaningful and nuanced. Um, but I'm just trying to watch a dragon uh, go blow ham, smoke up a Targaryen ass. <laughs> Don't blow smoke up my ass. And if she doesn't watch it, you can't watch it. Or do you guys ever go into different rooms and watch different shows? She would do that. I'm too needy. I'm like, I want to just hang out together. So like, we'll watch whatever we can both agree on. Uh -huh. And then I come to LA and I binge. Can, yeah, I can. Sometimes, and sometimes I have to record too late. But last night, we got home early, and I was able to watch an episode. Um, and, yeah. What about you? Like, it sounds like you and Avital don't watch the same thing. Like, she'll watch Game of Thrones, and you'll, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Off? Yeah, I'm usually jerking it, or, like, I'm in, in the, the office, or like, or cranking you... it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, like, or Where in the kitchen. Where do you fap while she's watching? I'm either in the office jerking it, or, like, I'm in the kitchen having, like, a cheeky fap, or, like, if <laughs> yeah. I'm in the bathroom. Into the garbage I, disposal. I get turned on or whatever, she's watching yeah. it, and I'm, like, sort of jerking off right. in the bathroom. You, like, put bedroom. a fleshlight <laughs> yeah. into the, like, your sliding glass yeah, door, yeah. and between the sliding glass I'll door and the wall. I'll the front door, the mail <laughs> slot, so and she's And you'll pretend you're watching a loop, you're sort of pumping the floor. Flashlight. That's enough. <laughs> Don't bring the dog into it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, golly. No, we usually deviate because I'm watching sports. Where do you then... watch sports? On your phone? On your computer? Uh, either like she's watching on her laptop, I'm watching on the TV, or I'm watching on an iPad, she's watching on the TV. I see. But you're hanging out in the same room. Sometimes, sometimes we separate. Like if I need to listen to something. Yeah, you don't put headphones on and just hang out on the couch? Don't, don't put headphones on, no. All right. Uh, all right, speaking of shows, this is a advice podcast after yeah. all. That's right. People are in desperate need of our advice. It's called Always. If I Were You. With Jake. And Amir. And Amir, yeah. Sometimes we record over Zoom remote. Sometimes we're in the same room. Sometimes we're wearing the same color shirt. Isn't that interesting? And red is kind of rare for us. I feel like we both only have one red shirt. This is my only red T-shirt. Yeah, I think so too for me. Very cool. You know, this is the T-shirt that I actually I have two, but the other one's too small. Anyway, this is the shirt that I wore in the last episode of Jake and Amir. Wow, there are pictures of you in that shirt, but it's green, right? Um, there might be. I know there's another thing where I have like a green shirt and they made it red, so it might be that. Right. In like Photoshop afterwards, yeah. Yeah. Or it was like orange and they made it green or something like that. Yeah, like the something soap like one. that. Oh, yeah. The Turn Soap into Sun is a green shirt and I think they made it orange. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great shirt. Been reviewing the old HBO series Rome with my friends. Cool. Which I actually watched and urged you to watch. I thought you would enjoy it, but I guess you never did. I Oh, yeah. Wait, I will watch it. What's it called? Rome? Rome. It's on HBO? 
Yeah, it was like on HBO in like the early 2000s. Okay. No, I'm going to... Permission to take my phone out and email myself to watch Rome? Um, yeah, I mean, sure. One you should second. be able to remember just because oh. it was really quick. One oh. <laughs> Why are you so slow? R. What? R. <laughs> o. Mm. <laughs> eh. <laughs> and ascend. Rome. <laughs> <laughs> You get into a plane crash tonight. <laughs> what a fucking waste. <laughs> he never got to watch Rome. Uh, it's on Apple Podcasts, so it's D-O-T-R-R pod on Twitter. Thank you to Kyler for um, sending us that theme song. Yeah, for reminding work. you to watch Rome. Yeah. I told you to watch it. Didn't really mean much until Kyler mentioned it, though, right? Um... <laughs> 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 my tendonitis. <laughs> you hit my tendon. Is it feeling any better or just sort of status quo as you It's keep? feeling significantly better from the time when I was doing absolutely nothing for it. Mm -hmm. So the brace makes it so it doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Because I can't do the painful motion. Every once in a while, I'll remove the brace and test her out. And... That's when and you it's get in a, trouble. Yeah. It's a lot less significant than it was, but it's still around. But, you know, yeah. I went like, I went swimming this morning. Oh, wow. A nice little low impact exercise. That's good. With um, the brace. I removed the brace in the Not water. Not waterproof. No. Yeah. You wouldn't want to take this bad boy in the water. No. Nor should you. Wait, it's hardly fucking didn't... skin proof. I mean, it's falling apart and it smells nasty. And it's only been like three days. Does that mean you didn't go... Um... Surfing? Weren't you going to go surfing? With I was going to go surfing this morning with Jeff, but he bailed on me because the waves were too big. So when do you get that text? That's like, by the way, waves are too big. I'm going back to sleep. Yes. Oh, he texted me that yesterday afternoon. Oh, they know that yeah. far ahead. He's, he's very reliable when it comes to surfing. Like when he says he's going to pick me up at 6 a.m., he's there at 6 a.m. Wow. Um, yeah. But today, no go. Yeah. The, we were going to go for a sunset surf on Monday. Yeah. Um, but waves were too big, too big, canceled. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to go, uh, this morning. Yeah. Uh, too big, too, waves are too big. And then canceled. how, how big is too big? Like 10 feet? No. Uh, four to six feet. Four is too big. So you're looking for that one, two or three. I mean, no, foot. I think four is, I think if, if the surf report said three to four, I'd yeah. be excited. That's interesting. Good. And they could tell you yesterday if that way is going to be four five or six feet or it's I, kind of a guesstimate. It's kind of a guesstimate. It's like, and that's, and even then there's still so many variables that's like maybe a five foot wave. That's like a nice, slow rolling wave, right. with like a, a nice big uh, sandbar, you know, shoulder height, yeah. water all the way in. That'd be great. Right. But then there's like sometimes there's two foot waves uh, on a beach break that are just like crashing right on the shore. So you can't really surf that. That's why I'll never surf because I don't trust Poseidon, the god of the sea, to yeah. treat me with the reverence and respect that I need. For sure. I need a surface that will never change. Right. So I will play. I need a surface that looks calm and ready. <laughs> because on the surface, I look calm and ready. Exactly. To drop bombs. So I'll do table tennis. Yeah, you'll never see like. By the way, watch out! This table tennis is super sharp. Right today. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's no variable. There's no, no variable. Change. There's actually no god that controls table tennis. Nor should there be. Right. Because it's Unless a game. You could become the the way that Poseidon is the god of the sea, <laughs> and Zeus the god of thunder. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. You could be the god <laughs> of table tennis. You imagine that, Shmuel. The wow. god of table tennis. And what would I control? Because I feel like there's the not top a lot of... spin. <laughs> the 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 fact that sometimes the ball will nick the net uh -huh. and dribble over, yeah. and that's your point. Or Let. sometimes yeah. it'll hit the net Grace. and dribble back. Oh, interesting. You know, Dep I think that's, that's usually a... <laughs> that seems like it's usually reliant on how hard you hit the ball and where. That's the type of shit that you would know as the god <laughs> of table tennis. Huh. Okay. That's really cool. I'm beginning to feel like a whack god. Whack god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but not like whack in a way that's bad. Right. Whack is You call it like, a thwack god. That's pretty good. More yeah. Although if I could just choose what to be a god of, I feel like I, I stake you can't. my click. <laughs> Cause I don't necessarily like ping pong that much. I feel like can I do it for something else? For what? I don't know, fucking basketball. No way. <laughs> you could do it for, for Mazda. 
<laughs> what? I feel like a Japanese car company is yeah. gonna hire me to be you their could be god. the Mazda god. Like Mazda god. <laughs> yeah. A Zoom MFA Zoom. Maz God. So I'm in charge of how fast these cars go. They're pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, throwing Toyota. I want to choose which Camry. I'm not going to give you there. Toyota because they make they they make the trucks, they make the Tundra, yeah. they make the Ford. I feel like those <laughs> rugged automobiles is not really some. I give you Hyundai. It's not bad. So I get to choose which car is the. And I'd give you the... Daewoo. <laughs> Which one's Daewoo? Daewoo is a Japanese car brand. Can you imagine me rolling up in a Laganza and people are making fun of me, obviously, because mm-hmm. it's kind of falling apart. Right. And then they, I say, you wouldn't be yelling mean things at me if you knew that I was actually the Daewoo god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll take it. No, other hand. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that actually did hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. No, it wasn't your fault. I twisted my hand to make it touch you. I don't know why I did that. Uh, all right. This is If I Were You, the only advice pod <laughs> on the web hosted by us. Uh, I'm Amir. I'm Jake, and I have tendonitis. And you can see it. We're what we're shooting this. We're back in the studio together. So we're it's another classic right. studio app. You can watch it on our YouTube channel. Wrist brace activated. I'm the tendonitis god. What if they wanted to put you in a cast? Would you do that, or would you no. say it's not worth it? It's not worth it. Got it. Would they suggest a cast, or it's not even that kind of problem? It's not that kind of problem. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, this is a guy who's wondering if it's too late to change something about himself. All right, let's find out. Uh, hey, guys. We'll call him uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Cool. Um, is it too late to change my handwriting? Everything about it is off. I hold my pencil wrong. It ends up hurting my hand. I write in a weird semi-cursive way. So my pen rarely lifts it from the paper, but I am writing print. My writing ends up looking rough and gross, actually. I'm starting a new school program soon and would like to look back on my notes and think this is nice instead of what child stole my notebook. Uh Please advice on how to change something about yourself that you've been doing since you were a young child. I'm 25 years old. Thanks. I'm floored that you care about your handwriting. Yeah, it doesn't come up a lot. Yeah, it's weird that like if high I were schoolers school, probably just type notes, right? Or I, do they still require you to write it just because that's I don't know. How you learn? That seems kind of crazy. I think if I were sending a high school aged kid to school, mm-hmm. I would probably, as a parent uh, sitting on the PTA, you know, be like, they should be allowed to type their notes. Oh, interesting. Because that's a much more relevant skill set to develop. But like, it's also like, I bet there's parents are like no there's you you have so much more tactile like learning when you're actually writing shit down you right. learn it better more true or something yeah and then i would be like yes and and that's why your kid will be slower than mine because they will be a typing <laughs> speed demon I'm he has the... a gun <laughs> i am the god of tendonitis <laughs> <laughs> okay he can use an ipad please well, uh, this is actually gives me an idea, which is there should be, we went to elementary school yeah. 30 years ago. We learned this shit, right. but we don't really use it anymore. So like there should be a Handwriting. Sp- elementary school every 30 years. Like I should be able to go back and like learn algebra. Yeah. I, I will never. Definitely like, forgot. I mean, get, when, when we forgot you, it all basically. When the, in the rare instance, instances where you actually have to write something down, yeah. do you find that it's like pretty hard? Yeah, pretty hard. Yeah. It's yeah. really, it's weird. It yeah. feels weird. It looks weird. And I'm also bad at spelling when I'm writing stuff because I'm like getting ahead of myself. Right. You want to type it and there's so much autocorrect that like, I mean, in, in elementary school or junior high, we used to write full essays by hand. Yeah. I haven't written a full page of paper probably in 25 years. Yeah. Which I think actually made for much worse essays because it's actually great to be able to like read what you wrote, realize edit. that something is repetitive or something's dumb or it needs a setup line or whatever, and then like make edits. So you're not nostalgic for that time. Like, oh, I wish we'd do that again. No, no, I'm, I'm actually not. Interesting. If uh, you seem to be like, you would be like a... Oh, I, I wish we would go back to that way. Everything's too digitalized. Style yeah. Person. I mean, no, I, I like... I don't know, a handwritten note, note or something. Right. But it does, I, there's not really, I'm, I also don't like clutter. So I do like to throw things away. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily like into handwriting notes. 
History is another thing we don't really like. We learned. I learned U.S. history in eleventh grade. Okay, I forgot the fucking details in the last twenty five years. Yeah, in my old age, I've like gotten into history again. So you, like, yeah, I guess there's documentaries and stuff that adults do. Yeah, and I started buying history books. And really, just, like, reading. just like a textbook. Yeah, well, I also bought a Kindle recently. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I bought a. I bought like I I was reading like you know all the history books that you're supposed to buy, and I found one that is just like that truly starts at the beginning of starts time? at like yeah like seventy thousand years ago oh, yeah. when like the the people first left like the cradle of civilization and kind of spread out across like, the Lock, George the world. Washington shit. Uh, no, that was old. That was like three hundred years ago. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. saying like you know all that shit. Like um, fucking well, right now I'm sort of learning how people ben came to England habit with like a kite, the Samoan Islands, and the key. Yeah, not the key. I'm saying even before that. Yeah, way yeah. before that. <laughs> this is like, like Columbus yeah. sailed the ocean, like twenty thousand BC. Yeah, yeah. eons yeah. before that. Like Jesus like, was a fucking no. not even twenty thousand. He wasn't even a god Jesus. yet. No, he was just right. a dude. Obviously, no, not a dude. Not born. <laughs> not even close to being born. People's like skulls were just changing. I see. Yeah, just so like, like yeah. way, way, way. Like, like fucking Hunter Galileo level. Not Galileo, who came after after Jesus. Really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but like fucking like the 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 Hasmoneans, fucking yeah, like Greek fighters of 2000 bc level right. shit no this was like pre civilization <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you have a cold i think i do <laughs> saw a fly fly into your nose <laughs> it's laying eggs in your brain <laughs> and i'm learning that's how it works so anyway that's my tv show pitch idea is a, a new high school catered to 40 year olds you're it's learning a TV show, or yeah. TV show. Interesting. So it's like we're not actually going to do this, right? Obviously, it's kind of insane, but yeah. High school two, yeah, where every eighteen years you go back to high school to learn the shit that you did. Okay. Sort of Billy Madison meets right. Clone High. Yeah, it's kind of interesting as a TV show. I mean, no one would go for it because mm. it's a little like high concept. Yeah, high concept but low brow, like one note, a little too one note. Yeah. Sort of say by the bell, the new class, mm -hmm. wherein the kids are now in their 40s. Right. Only, like, Zach Morris is um, a dad. What was the question? The what? How to change the, your handwriting? <laughs> oh, I don't fucking know. Take a calligraphy class or some there shit. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what you could learn in high school, too. Yeah. Calligraphy. Yeah. This guy could be a producer on the show. Yes. Grammar rules? You remember grammar rules? I don't remember any of those rules. Um, yeah, what is a I remember. I remember. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. But yeah, I remember I remember the grammar. What other stuff. classes were there? There was history, chemistry is kind of chemistry, weird. biology, yeah. physics, yeah. Uh, <laughs> English. Yeah. yeah you do the weird thing about I was talking to Jill recently about the idea of homework. I thought you guys were yeah, no, we're we're trying to work it out. She well, I'm trying to work it out. She's not interested in seeing or talking to me. Didn't me now. Wow, wow. She doesn't return my calls or my texts. She doesn't answer my messages or my emails. I reached out to her dad. I reached out to her mom. I dated her sister. And they all blocked me. Yeah. But one of the last conversations we had, <laughs> I think the saddest thing we've ever done in 580 whatever episodes. What? The song. I hummed a tune. <laughs> it was awful. It was bad, but it was also <laughs> yeah, sad. Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were talking about homework and like you would wake up for school mm. at seven. Yeah. You'd go to school all day. And Afterwards, homework. you do like, you know, you do a sport, you go to practice. Yeah. You come home, you have to eat dinner with the family. Sure. And then it's homework. Homework. That is just a full, it's, yeah. that's such, it's so much time. Or reading. Yeah. Like, read the next two chapters. Like, I have to fucking do this math worksheet, and yeah. then I have to read a history textbook. Right. And reading the history text, that was actually the one that I brought up. It's like, you know, you're filling out a math worksheet, you're you're answering like a, you know, vocab quiz. Yeah. But then for history, it's just like, read 40 pages <laughs> of, of, of a dense... boring ass book. <laughs> yeah. You're 16, like, you can play Madden, or you can read about the XYZ affair. Yeah. <laughs> I, God. I really, I literally, 
never did homework. Really? I never did it. So you show up on the day, everyone's handing in, and they're like, Jake, your homework? Yeah. I would... <laughs> I wasn't even, le- I was not even, I didn't even have enough like fucking drive to mm. copy it like the other bad students. Oh, I see. I would just not have it. You wouldn't have it. I would just be like, And oh, would your I parents be it. like, did you do your homework today? Yeah. And I'd be like, yes. And they'd be like, let me see it. And I would like show them an old draft. Right. And they had six kids. They can't look. They can't keep they can't track. Get- yeah. They've got eyes on the homework. Yeah. But I was such a bad kid. Now that, my, a bad now that my friends are having children and seeing how hard it is to have two. Yeah. The fact that your parents had six should be illegal, I think. Yeah. There's no possible way they could have done anything but feed you and clothe you. That's a full time job for both of them. Yeah. Nonstop. Yeah. Constantly thinking your schedules, just giving six people three meals a day for 20 years in a row. Impossible. It's (laughs) it's really so it would take three hours to create, feed, and clean. And Mm -hmm. then you have to do it again for lunch and do it again for dinner. And then you go to bed. How could you possibly have any time to do anything else? Yeah. I mean, to have a 10-year-old and an infant at the same time. Impossible. With, you know, four-year-olds and six-year-olds in between. <laughs> yeah. It's just absolutely, absolutely bonkers. They must have been so sleep-deprived. But then your dad would also go to work and your mom had a job too? Uh, no, my mom was a full-time mom. Yeah. That's she the, couldn't have done enough. anything yeah. else. No. It must have been very stressful, I bet. She became a teacher when Micah was... When everybody else had gone to college, Micah was in high school. Yeah. She then she's like, I'm going to go back to work. Yeah. If I was your mom, I'd be like, I'm never doing anything ever again. Right. I'm not, I'm like, Micah's 18. Yeah. I'm never she should. A she should have had dish. like a four, she should have like gotten cash <laughs> when all of us, when yeah. all of us went to college, when Micah turned 18 and That's we had right. all survived. Yep. She should have gotten a paid A. She should have given, you should have all been paying her $1,000 a month for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's actually true. I owe my mom cash for yeah. sure. <laughs> have you ever paid like for a drink for your mom or like a ticket or a meal or anything like that? I wonder. No, but when I'm you thinking, go home. I'm considering <laughs> getting her like a watch. <laughs> yeah. I might get her a fucking Garmin. <laughs> I'm really about to pull the Aren't trigger you like on a Tom Tom, Mom, Mom. <laughs> Huh? Uh, I use my phone for a ways and stuff. I can get you a Fitbit, <laughs> a fucking corporate holiday gift for my mom. Yeah, for because I got decades. one. I got one from IAC in 2013, <laughs> and if you well, still have a micro USB, the charger doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but thanks for the whole feeding me every you meal and taking me the anywhere. You installed with a CD, <laughs> mom. <laughs> Oh, and Dad, I got you a hat. <laughs> Choking on spaghetti that she made you. <laughs> Dad, I, I, got, I got you a fucking hat. I got so, you a hat. It's a visor. <laughs> Your mom giving you a hat. Like, Holy shit, I almost just died again. I do remember. Like, so many of us almost died. I remember. Of course. Like, yeah. Six of them. I remember, like, just hanging out in the in the dining room one day. Everyone's eating, and all of a sudden, Micah starts choking. My dad just like jumped over a chair, smacking, smacked him on the back till he threw up. Yeah. Uh, Rachel also choked one time on wadded up toilet paper that she put in her mouth. Yeah. Micah wandered into the street, almost got hit by a car. Sure. Yeah. It yeah. seems like that's gonna happen a lot. It should happen a lot more. Like babies are fucking shoving full pieces of bread in their mouth. They Actively to trying to die for sure. Yeah, jumping into traffic. They don't know pain yet, so they don't get the consequences yeah. of life. To have that time six feels like impossible. Right. Anyway, shout out to this guy who I guess should take a fucking handwriting class. I'm sure there's TikToks about it or some shit. What yeah. do you want from me? <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> okay. Now I'm all like mad. <laughs> yeah. It's not even your fault. You started mad, I think. Yeah, I was pissed off at the day. Yeah. We'll be back soon, guys. Speaking of Twitter handles, Jake, I don't know if you saw. I saw. Much to my chagrin, actually. I didn't even give you a heads you up. You changed. No, I had to see it for myself. Uh, just a surprise on New Year's Day. Yeah, so. Or actually, New Year's Night. For about a decade, my Twitter handle was Jake and Amir, based on an old episode we did where I, my character, so obsessed with you, wanted to have your name in the Twitter handle. Mm-hmm. And it kind of worked out because most of the tweets were just about videos we made together. Correct. Uh, since then, I've been tweeting, slipping down a dirty rabbit hole of alt-right memes, sort of hateful <laughs> little asides and asnides, which are snide asides. Right. 
Uh, and as I devolve into this K-hole of sorts, I realized <laughs> I've been representing you perhaps um, incorrectly. My Is that really why you decided to leave? Because of all your anti-Semitic uh, hate tweets? Well, it wasn't specifically that. It just... One thing I never liked is when someone's like, hey, we had Jake and Amir on the show today, or like if I did somebody else's podcast, and it was kind of confusing. It was like, wait, so right. Amir is Jake and Amir, but Jake is also Jake Hurwitz. It was a little confusing. It made a lot it more out. sense when we had the web series. Now we don't even have that. Like, so that's right. Even like if they're like, so it's, it's Jake and Amir, why? And then you say, I have a web series, go check it out. Yeah. Now it's, yeah, now it's not even helpful. Uh, for that purpose. So I wanted Amir, which is obviously my Instagram name. That would be ideal, but that's not available yeah. naturally. Uh, but Blumenfeld, do you know who had Blumenfeld? No, your brother? My brother had Blumenfeld, twitter.com slash Blumenfeld. But he, when he married and had a child, changed his oh, last name. That's right. So my brother... Is he at Blumenrose now? He is... He went from Blumenfeld to Blumenrose, thus... Or I think his Twitter name is Ben Blumenrose. And then his uh, Twitter handle was available. So he's like, if you want, when I change it, you can snag Blumenfeld. I'm like, okay, how does that work? He's like, I have to leave it and you have to uh, like take it right away or else somebody might snipe it. Right. And then you have to get somebody to uh, get the Jake and Amir handle because somebody might snipe that. So I'm like, okay, this is a good time to change it because... Who'd you get to snipe the Jake and Amir handle? I just created a new username uh, that I then see. switched to Jake and Amir, and then I changed the Jake and Amir to Blumenfeld. So now my Twitter handle is just Blumenfeld, which is cleaner. The only problem is I'm no longer verified on Twitter. Oh, interesting. How do you get verified? That's kind of hard, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is quite but you hard. Didn't, you didn't lose any <laughs> followers. You just don't have the check symbol. That's correct. So I went to everything's re- the same. I went to re-verify, and it was like, yeah, this, that process is closed. You can't really do that anymore. I was like, all right. Didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> Blue check mark is gone. Gone Damn, forever. You hate to see it, man. <laughs> I don't know if I can continue to do the podcast with you at that stage no because if it'll be in this fashion where i have a blue check mark and you don't i just feel like we're not on equal equal ground in a way (laughs) i'd prefer i think to to end our professional relationship so that way i'm not really hosting a podcast with a nobody Uh. if that tracks (laughs) I don't know if that makes sense on your end. It doesn't. But for me, yeah, it does not that's make sense. That's kind of where it has to No. Where it's going to net out, <laughs> frankly. Uh, I'm still the same person. Obviously, the tweets are all still there. It's just the name is different. This artificial blue yeah. check mark, which a lot of people have, is just Now you're Blumenfeld, unchecked, unverified, <laughs> uninteresting, and unadored. Oh my god, I just went to your Twitter profile. It's just <laughs> Actually, it looks kind of cool to have it, it goes like uh, Amir and then at Blumenfeld right next to it. Yeah, I changed my name. So it's just Amir. And then my use my handle is at Blumenfeld. Yeah, it looks clean right. Like that's that. cool. That's it is clean. But I without like the check mark. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's nasty. <laughs> it's nasty to see. <laughs> and it's nasty for me. Actually, yeah. speaking of equal footing. Oh, your update. Uh, yeah. You know what? I got the surgery. I lived. Okay. That was good. So what What was that about, the, the foot surgery? You went completely underneath, right? You were like out of it. Yes, I did. But there, I guess there, I don't know exactly what the difference is, but like there's general anesthesia and then there's local anesthesia. Yeah. I think I local, local is like, isn't local just when your foot's numb, but you're awake? Yeah, so they must have done... Some, I mean, I was definitely out. They just didn't, like, put my entire body to sleep. They didn't shut it down. Oh, interesting. So um, you were more like in a, a sleep state rather than a coma. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't there. I felt like they... Um, maybe it's... They, like, put some kind of... Uh, they put a mask on me. I got tired. I blinked. I was awake. The surgery was over. Okay, that's so yeah, that feels what, like general to me. Yeah, but there's it was not it was local anesthesia. <laughs> okay, Maybe I'll look it up real quick so we're not spewing false information. Uh, so all right, do you fall asleep during local 
wow, it's really funny. Somebody, some one of the things that got filled in was, do you fall asleep during a nap? It's <laughs> a good question. <laughs> All right. What about local anesthesia? is given directly over the area where you have your procedure. Your healthcare provider may also give you conscious sedation or deep sedation to help you sleep during your procedure. Um, mm. So I guess I think that is what happened. What about... Um, um, I was sedated. I see. What about glocal anesthesia? So that is when... Um, that's when John Wolf uh, <laughs> puts you to sleep with uh, with local... Uh, with with a local anesthetic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But doesn't actually give you the surgery. So you sort of just right. lose an hour of your time, which isn't illegal. <laughs> it's fine. For him to steal time is, is not real theft. Yeah. And he Stealing didn't really, time he didn't, is a crime you can get away with. He didn't do Stealing anything. Stealing time is not a crime. That's right. And he doesn't really do anything. You just sort of like... You you lose time and, he, and you're confused because you don't know what he did, but ultimately it's right. nothing. So what he did was convince the doctor not to give me the surgery. Like I I went out and the, and he was like he's allergic to titanium and I feel like the screws you're going to put in the foot are <laughs> titanium. And the doctor was like, yeah, they are. Uh, and Wolf was like, yeah, he should have said that on the form, but I'm uh, trust me, like I know. So right. So like we just have to wait for him to wake up. And then I woke up and it's like, yeah, he stole my time. <laughs> so fortunately you did local and not glocal anesthesia. You wake up after yeah. your foot surgery. What's the foot surgery specifically? Did they tell you? Yes, it is. Oh, God damn it. I, it's, um, it, hold on. Let me, uh, let me look up what it's called. It's, uh, it's called. Can't wait. It's going to be so good. Osteot- osteot- osteotomy. Okay. Osteotomy. So that means sounds um, like they're getting rid of something. Yes, it's it was bunion surgery. Is they got rid of my bunion on one foot? Though, on one foot. Though the bunion itself was not what was causing my pain. Mm-hmm. It was. Um, it was. It's related because when it when they move the bunion over, when they shift your foot or whatever, uh, they shorten and tighten up the ligaments. And I had ligament damage in my foot. That's, I see. That's and, what it fucked. And up. when they. S- when they said they went in there and like tinkered around, we're like, yeah, we saw the ligament damage. Uh, they did not mention like if they saw the damage, and like shockingly enough, uh, my doctor who did my MRI and was planning on the surgery uh, got into an accident just before my surgery and <laughs> broke his arm. So I had to have another doctor do it who didn't know me at all. Oh God! And I'm going over it with him, and I'm like reading what you know they tell you what they're gonna do, and it's like osteotomy uh removal of painful bunion i was like well my bunion's not really i like it <laughs> and i'm like so you're gonna fix like the the torn ligaments and he just looks at me he's like the what oh my and, like, god I'm, as you're falling asleep i'm like in a gown at this point <laughs> like i'm i've driven back to new york city on christmas eve i'm like ready to go into surgery and he's just like what am i doing <laughs> washing his hands but like not really fully <laughs> <laughs> just a quick rinse you're not using soap doc <laughs> call the other guy have him fucking eating explain ki- it to you <laughs> eating a kind bar <laughs> <laughs> sorry this is my first day what What do we have um, to do i mean th- it did feel like that a little bit it was weird but the other nice thing is that like um it, since it was christmas eve i was like the only person in the in the surgery center Mm, and I got nice. like three anesthesiologists, like five different nurses. Everybody, everybody, uh, I, w- I was the only person there. So I was just, I had like many people looking after me, including two Jake and Amir fans. Yeah, I was going to ask, where, where, was everybody there Jewish? Because that's, that's usually how it works at like my brother's hospital. Like he has to work on Christmas because he gets like Hanukkah off. Um, I don't, there, I think maybe some people there were Jewish, but not everyone. Definitely not everyone. Because so like, some people were talking about it being Christmas Eve. I got there and someone was wearing like reindeer antlers <laughs> as part of their... <laughs> that scrubs. was the doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a bone saw. Rudolph nose and a bone saw. So you wake up, surgery was a success, basically. Yes. They, they say that it went well. I'm back in my room. I'm groggy. They say, uh... That they've texted my wife. Jill comes up. I'm chilling in the bed. They give me saltines. They give me apple juice. <laughs> I'm a good little boy. <laughs> I did the surgery good. And sorry, did you say you texted my wife? <laughs> I look down at my leg. There's a bloody stump. 
I look for the doctor, but I only see the Joker. <laughs> Have you seen Joker yet, by the way? No, and I don't think I shall. <laughs> I still really want you to see it, just to commiserate with you on if you dislike it as much as I do. I'm certain I will, but I will. I'll I'll see it. I um I got a screener, so I'll check it out. So, how much pain is there as you leave the hospital? Um, so after the doctor gives me my pain meds, he tells me um to take it easy. He's like, um, he gives me like all of the post care stuff. Uh, I leave. I walked out using a cane. Whoa, uh, cane! Feeling like unsteady, but. No pain, completely pain free. I'm walking. I like went into a rest up on the way home. Uh, it's Christmas Eve. We're driving back to my aunt's house. Uh, I get there. I'm thinking like, this is it's it's crazy. I had I had surgery today, and now I'm drinking a beer, singing Christmas carols, pain free. Science, um, science. But then oh. and then oh, then it all the pain the pain sort of the the pain begins around around the time the family is gathered around the tree singing oh holy night actually can you guys knock it off it really is starting to hurt <laughs> grandpa bill <laughs> it's no longer a silent this a, night <laughs> this is an unholy night to be certain so what does uh, it feel like the pain just start it's like it really it felt like someone stuck a letter opener into the sole of my foot and wrapped it up really tight with tape. Jesus. Like, on the inside or hot, on like the outside of it? On the inside of my foot. <laughs> it is like a hot throbbing pain. Like like, like he left a just, pen in there by accident. It tr- it felt like it, I in my head like I'm imagining if I unwrap my bandage that like it's just an infected wound stapled shut oh, with like, God. like tied with bubble gum. It felt like my foot was trying to explode out of the out of uh the bottom it, it was like, so I instantly go home. And I, <laughs> Are you in a sour mood? I was in, I think I was, I was just, no, not like sour mood, but sort of just like silently freaking out. You're like, oh like God, my what sis- if something is wrong? Yeah. My sister was just like talking to me and, I, and she's like, you're like, you seem like you're handling everything really well. And I was like, I actually need to go home. <laughs> I appreciate that, but I need to go home now. It's hard because you and, don't want to like, you don't want to alert everyone else, but you also don't want to act like so like proud and confident that they think that everything's fine. You're like, yeah, I'd look calm, but I want you to know that if you were in this pain, you'd be like crying a lot. So like, that's the severity yeah. here. I don't want to freak anyone out, but I like, I don't want to ruin Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but but everyone needs to take care of me post haste. <laughs> I don't want to make this about me, but I need help a lot. So what uh, do they give you stronger pain medicine so you can get back yeah, on the Yeah, so I got I got something called hydrocodone. It's like an opioid. It's like Percocet, I think. It's like It's the shit that wrestlers get med. addicted to. Yeah. Um and part of the issue was that Jill even like seeing that I was getting uh an opioid uh was so nervous about me taking it that she really didn't even want me to take them at all oh like Uh, because you might get addicted yeah so i'm in a ton of pain and i like take one and jill is just like so apprehensive (laughs) just like watching my every move and i it's like a couple hours later i'm like trying to go to sleep i need another one and she's (laughs) she thinks she's treating me like i'm addicted already can you just take an emergency instead (laughs) maybe we have an airborne gummy yeah, she she wants like yeah, she just wants me to ice it and go to bed. I'm like, I truly can't sleep. It feels like someone is not it feels like a raccoon is eating the <laughs> eating the sole of my foot. So I wake up the next morning. I barely sleep. It's like maybe I slept for two hours. This is Christmas. To- morning. Like the whole of the night. Yeah. And everything I say about getting you surgery at bit the day before Christmas because of how much attention they pay to you is actually bad on Christmas when you feel like something's gone wrong because no one is there. Like the surgical center is closed. Uh, They're like, if you are having problems, call your, go to the emergency room basically. And then I don't want to go to the emergency room on Christmas. Right. I call my doctor. Uh, They're obviously closed. They give you like the doctor's cell phone numbers, but it's 7 a.m. And I texted my doctor uh, then I called the other one who had broken his arm. Uh, eventually, they get back to me at like 9 or 10 a.m. Uh, and the doctor who had broken his arm was just like, 
I think what happened is they wrapped the bandage too tight. So like your foot is really inflamed. If the bandage is too tight, it doesn't matter how many pain meds you take. It's probably not going to do anything. Oh, so uh, he has a theory, does he? Yeah. So I unwrapped the ACE bandage. There's three bandages on my foot. There's like the main one covering the stitches. There's like gauze wrapped around that. And then there's an ACE bandage wrapped around that. Um, So I take the ACE bandage off. Instantly feel better. Oh, wow. Not like, not like (laughs) everything is cured. But, like, the pain medication that I was taking started to work then. Yeah, because nobody's then, like, squeezing your open, like, wound, basically. Right, exactly. And then um, and then it sort of started coming back, and I cut – this is another thing the doctor said I could do. I cut the top of the gauze uh, just to relieve some of the pressure even from that. Jesus. And instantly felt better. Oh. Uh, so – but then I – even though they had said that I'd be able to walk in, like, a walking boot, I couldn't – walk for um i guess it's been two maybe two weeks now <laughs> almost two weeks now and i can't walk <laughs> but, but i can't like i can i i think i'll be able to walk like tomorrow i've been like hobbling a little bit when i need to so um, like but i haven't really I've, I've essentially completely stayed off it where when they talked to me about the surgery they were like yeah you'll be like in a walking boot the day after surgery yeah and like start running has start jogging false. around now <laughs> yeah that's i mean that there's like no way that's happening it's so tender but um today was the first day where i feel like i can i've been walking on the boot it feels all right are you off the opioids uh yeah i i Truly because Jill was so nervous that it was like, it was not worth it to me. Uh, so I was taking Tylenol and it was the pain wasn't that bad. I had like other meds for the inflammation, which seemed to be the more painful thing anyway. Showering? Um, I, I got a sponge bath the first week and now I'm, I've graduated to, I can bathe myself. I just put my foot outside the shower with a garbage bag wrapped in it and I can shower myself. But you have to stand on one foot the whole time? I sit, I just sit in the tub and I drape my foot over the side uh, and like give, it's sort of like a half shower bath. Yeah. And at what point do the stitches go away or you can take actual showers? Um, they're coming out tomorrow. Oh, so then you can, in theory, yeah. wear a real shoe? In theory, if the swelling's gone down enough, he the doctor thinks I could wear a sneaker, which is weird because like the boot that they give you, it feels like it's less comfortable on my foot than if I just was wearing like an ultra boost. Right. Like the sneakers I wear are pretty comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I guess this, the thing that this cast has is like, it has a really rigid bottom. So I can't bend, uh, I can't bend my uh, toes. Right. Like which prevents no, like, stretching motion. of the wound. Yeah, exactly. So tomorrow's the big day. If yeah, tomorrow, the stitches either come out tomorrow or stay in for another week. Wow. Groundhog's day. What are you hoping for? Oh. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I don't mind the stitches in another week. I like showering with a plastic bag over my foot. It's just a bag. It's just a bag after all. Uh, yeah. Once that's, once that's done, I, I, I think once I can start, um, walking on the boot too, instead of the crutches, it'll feel, it'll feel a bit better. What's interesting about getting like a physical injury is like, all of the things that stressed me out or bummed me out before seem like they're not a big deal anymore, which I think is kind of nice. It's put things in perspective. Yeah. Like now I'm just, now I'm thinking like, oh, as soon as my foot feels better, everything is good. Whereas before I was like, oh, it's like this work, this work, this work. It's all stressing me out. It's all too much. Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, now it's only my foot that's too much. Everything else is manageable <laughs> once you're healthy. As long as it How bad could anything be as long as if I can walk there? <laughs> As long as it doesn't feel like someone is branding the bottom of my foot for an entire night. That's really It's a good way to keep uh, perspective in the new year. Yeah. I should just like stab myself in the foot every once in a while. Every (laughs) every time I have another panic attack, I'll just, (laughs) I'll just stab myself in the foot. I also like the idea of you texting your doctor who has a fully broken arm. You're like, my foot really hurts. Like, what should I do about it? And he's like (laughs) texting you back in like full body cast. Yeah. That, that, I love that doctor so much. He's so good. He was so concerned. Good man. He's definitely going through his own shit. (laughs) He's Jewish, so he wasn't celebrating Christmas at least. Uh, All right, let's take a break here, and then we'll come back and try to answer some questions for This Is, If I Were You, an advice show, the only one on the internet, hosted by us. I'm Amir. 
I'm Jake. And we'll be back after these. And we're back. Jake, do you have any? Oh, it's a list. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I think we should uh, we should mention uh, ways to help Australia from burning uh, if we can. Yeah, LA was burning a few months ago, and now the entirety of Australia seems to be consumed in uh, hundreds of brush fires that burn across uh, its coastline. Yeah, and all I think about is my goddamn foot. I love Australia. Let's try to help them if we can. You looked up some places where people can donate, right? Yeah, Australian Red Cross, Salvation Army Disaster Appeal, um, and everything is just pretty much one Google search away. So find a way to donate. Every every little bit, every little bit helps. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm donating 48 cents. What? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Cent. Sent. I just think it's important that you sent a both of us a stamp. You sent a single stamp. I think it's important stamp. that both of us. We can't just say like, "Oh, donate," and then we're not donating. Yeah, so I, I, I think we should give. To... We can give from the podcast a couple hundred bucks. People just heard some advertisements. No. We could just give a percentage well, I, of that at forty-eight cents. I wouldn't want. I'd hate to forty-eight cents. I'd hate to dip into my nest egg <laughs> too much. <laughs> you just said that you were you had a new lease on life. You wanted to put things in perspective. You realized that there are bigger problems. That's why out I there gave than you. fucking two quarters, essentially. Not really, even two quarters. Less than yeah, that. Well, I could deliberately less than that. You're, why don't you just say fifty? Wow, you're going to nickel and dime me out over two cents. Fine, I'll give an extra two. <laughs> right? So that would that make you knock it off? Nickel and you're dime me is, feel like a. That's basically what you gave. You gave. Uh, yeah, you gave less than nickels and dimes, 48 cents. So little. Fine. All right, we'll do it from the podcast. Send it to me first, and I'll send it to Australia. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> uh, all right, new year, new us. I asked on Reddit. That's right, throwing it back. We have a very active subreddit. If you haven't been, uh, if you haven't been hanging around there, it's r slash uh, Jake and Amir. Uh, oh, people yeah. still in I love there. That. People still hanging out in there. And in fact, I asked if anybody had any questions for today's episode. Hit us there. We got about seventy of them overnight. Nice. That's right. So if you're looking okay. to connect with some other Jake and Amir fans, I know my Twitter handle is different, but uh, Jake and Amir fans still exist on our subreddit. Here's some questions. Uh, all right, first one from Dublinier. Uh, this is the first podcast we're recording post my LASIK surgery. Oh yeah, are you wearing? You're not. You're not wearing glasses right now. Today's the first day I'm trying to wear non-prescription glasses. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Describe them to me. Where uh, did you get them? I got them from Warby Parker. Actually, shout out to one of our sponsors. No shit. It was actually a funny story. You. My I went glasses shopping with my parents, and my mom told the lady working at Warby Parker that I do Warby Parker ads on my podcast. And then <laughs> I was kind of embarrassed because that lady had not heard of our podcast. Right. But then somebody else at Warby Parker is like, wait, are you a mirror? And I said, yes. And my mom was like, see, everyone knows his podcast. <laughs> and that lady used her friends and family discount on me. Wow. So your mom embarrassing you saved you cash. Yeah. And what happened there is that my mom clocked that and was like, okay, it doesn't matter if I embarrass anyone anymore. It ended up working. And so for the right. next however long, now I have carte blanche green light access to embarrass yeah. to save she, cash. She learned no lesson. In fact, you learned a lesson. <laughs> yeah. Your mom will always embarrass you. And now she now she's going to double down. That's right. Anytime you guys go to like dinner, she's like, I think we might be able to get a friends and family here. <laughs> he has a Hold fucking on. podcast yelling at a chef in a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. My jackass son has a fucking podcast. What do you mean you don't listen to buckets? <laughs> Just holding a bus driver's steering wheel until he pays <laughs> attention to me. Amir, tell him that the fucking podcast is called. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it only cost a dollar ten. Why do we need a discount on that, mommy? Ima, no. <laughs> I no, I no longer want to ride the public transportation with you, Ima. <laughs> anyway, as it stands, I bought three glasses at Warby Parker. Going to try them out. Um, but I will say that 
today's the first day where my eyes are feeling almost like I actually have glasses baked into them. It's been a slower recovery process than you let on. Oh, interesting. Well, maybe you just didn't have eyes as strong as zaddy well what it is is like the worse your vision is the more they correct it the longer it takes to heal so yours was like a very subtle small prescription change and i think right. mine it really was... It was like the next day i was fine right did you have dryness residual dryness in the morning no it, there really was like it was it i guess it felt like maybe a, a tiny tiny bit like blurry or like a light leak sort of happening but it felt there was no dryness did you have and, did you have halos or uh yeah nasal burning a lot of nasal burning did you have where your right. sinuses no, burnt where it was like you wake up you sort had of cor- choking <laughs> you choking had corneal <laughs> rosacea i think right <laughs> yeah so i broke out of some sort of ocular hive right. where the you rash receding pupil <laughs> on the day <laughs> so my pupil had a little leak and it sort of leaked mm-hmm. out onto my eyelid so it was like a black little a dark black stain trickling down almost like mascara running like you were crying soy you (laughs) looked like you were crying soy i was beefing soy and then the way it worked is that the tears would flow up i don't know if it was like an anti-gravity post lasik whatever the fuck but the black like tar would leak up it was almost like a horror film every night yeah well because you had vertigo you were upside down yeah, so I sleep upside down and inside out. I had vertigo, right? That's what that was correct. Mm-hmm. I had that ocular rosacea and I had that pupillary leakage. And mm-hmm. so for the last let's see, I got the I got the I got the LASIK on April first. It's the seventeenth yeah, now. Been, Today's yeah, the first day where days. I can smell, hear, or talk. That's awesome. I'm really and you're wearing the uh you're wearing the glasses and Yeah, Warbies. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they're called the Lucy. <laughs> The Lucy, because yeah. that's that's how your eyes feel in your head. Yeah. I saw, <laughs> I saw on Instagram you lost one for a for a moment. Yeah, I lost a I lost <laughs> one ball. Out. I lost one ball entirely, and then the other one feel it feels small and sort of like it's a small jingling ball. around. It's like jing, It's like a gumball in a a single gumball in a gumball machine almost. You have one putty eye, don't you? They they lost one and they they made you sort of like a claymation eye because they you didn't want the glass one. You couldn't afford the glass eye. Yeah, and he sort of he took the putty out and he like rolled it on the Sunday funnies and then he put it back in. So like where one eye is, there's nothing, mm-hmm. and then with the other one looks like a spherical like a Dilbert comic. That's really funny. Yeah, you but, sound. It sounds like you like are hot now i forgot how to talk i fr- had forgotten how to talk basically <laughs> so i'm relearning english yeah i had a voicemail from you and you were you were screaming i th- i thought it was hebrew but maybe it was just i think uh, it was, was latin because i was sort of de right. the way the lasik worked is that it like brought me to a point where i was de-aging so like i yeah. felt like i was living in like 300 ce for like a week and a half but it felt like eternity and your follow-up was it was they they gave you like the the little eye exam and then also the doctor did an exorcism yeah so he did he pulled he pulled the demons from your from your brain yeah he was able to like shove a crucifix so close <laughs> to my brain that like a lot of the demons came out but some of them were just so frightened by it that they they've now yeah. like recessed even deeper into my corneal like ridge because i so, saw i saw on avital's instagram story uh in the middle of the night you were crawling on the ceiling <laughs> and you turned and you hissed at her mm-hmm. but your eyes are just two mm. black holes yeah uh, yes yes deep yes, as a yes. well <laughs> yeah and you saw the veins on my face right <laughs> yeah i mean i couldn't even see your face it was mostly <laughs> veins and eye sockets uh-huh, and but... again you were on the ceiling you had eaten your dog yeah you I, ate luke right? I, I, yeah i consumed him because the the satan in my head that had controlled me post lasik told me to do so and it felt mm-hmm. as though his word was God, and that I was doing his bidding. Right, but now it's nice because you don't have to. You don't have to like put glasses on in the morning. You can kind of just go. And yeah. Eat. So today I woke up and I was like, "Oh my God!" Like this is the first time where like I can read like the clock in my room, and I don't have to like squint or anything. So that like felt really nice, and I was able to like. Oh yeah. And I was able to like buy non-prescription sunglasses, which is like a cool little neat thing as well. That's very nice. So like, even though my recovery was a little slow, I'm I'm happy that I have. I've done it and I'm I'm excited to get to this point cuz a lot of people say it takes, you know, 2 to 4 to 6, sometimes 3 months to recover fully from LASIK. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, that's crazy. So you didn't have like halos or anything? I had <laughs> Did you have any like no, when you drive at my, night it, it was like a little halo effect? Uh, no, my side effects didn't sound like they were as severe as yours with the uh the demons you know, with the the demon possession and the dog eating. I did have I did have some like kind of light haloing during the day and some light sensitivity, but it 
it only lasted for a day or two. Yeah, I feared the halos because they reminded me of the angels that were coming to get me. I felt like, for whatever reason, I was like the, the spawn of Satan in some sort of bizarre way after the LASIK, and that those halos <laughs> like represented another angel trying to right. save my life. Well, you are the spawn of Satan. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're not recording a podcast. <laughs> the devil is back. <laughs> Eat Actually, your dog. If you play that part backwards, that's what it says. <laughs> um, but I look forward to keeping everyone updated abreast. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to treat glasses yet, but um, we'll find out together. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is this? After all, this is an advice show. It's If I Were You, the only freaking advice podcast hosted by two men with perfect vision, neither of them the devil. I'm Amir. I'm Jake. And we got some good cues today. Your brother's going through, helping us out, trying to find out the greatest questions we have. Um, That's right. Mike is on the case. Has he, has he let you know that this is a fun job for him? Is this an annoying job? Is he into it? Is he fast? Is he, he I think he's good. He, I, like, I hadn't been paying attention, but I looked at our like, uh, good questions tab, and he's, has, there's 300 in there. Damn. Yeah. Damn, so Daniel. He's fucking, he's fucking doing it. Yeah, but I look and they're all spam. Right. Well, he's he's sort of just uh, he he's pulling the wool over our eyes. He's just invoicing yeah. us for yeah. hours and hours and hours. <laughs> yeah, he thinks this is a good question. Uh, Pier one, ten percent off Father's Day sale from. Well, let's talk about it. Sixty. No, I don't want right, to talk, let's about, talk it. about it. That's not a good question. Uh, that's I'll not come a up with question. a name for a Pier One guy. So this um, one is oh, a, let's call him Pierre. This one is a receipt from the Goat app. He bought Yeezys using our credit card. He put that really? in the good questions, kind of like as a a fuck you. I as think, a fuck to me. you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> he has us bent over a fucking table, hand over fist, stealing cash mm. from us, and he's leaving. Right. I, I just a, got a I just got a, an a, a alert on my phone from yeah. <laughs> from our bank. Did you buy tickets? No, uh, to, no, I to, didn't to, buy anything. Uh, Tulum. <laughs> no, I didn't buy tickets to you anywhere. Didn't... You did buy tickets to Tulum. <laughs> that must be Micah. So I think I don't know if I bought them, but I think <laughs> you know you somebody... didn't buy them. <laughs> okay, right. I'm not trying to. I don't want to cover for him too. You much, are but covering I think, for him. You're standing. I think up one for him. of the three of us, either me, you, or Micah, bought tickets it wasn't to me. Tulum. I'm wasn't sure it's you. for a good reason. <laughs> no way. I'm sure it's for a good reason. Yeah, the good reason is that he wants a vacation. Oh, here's another. He probably needs. Here's a good question email. I'll see you in mm -hmm. Tulum, motherfuckers. So he's right. okay. he's taunting yeah. us. He's taunting yeah, I just us. got a. I just got one with yeah. It's, yeah. It's his flight information. Yeah, he put it in good questions. You I don't know why he's doing this. Okay, so he did buy three tickets: one for me, you, and him. Uh, but he's oh. the only one on the plane right now. I guess. Oh, the flight's taking off. He wanted us to pay for his flight, but we couldn't make it because we didn't know about it until it was too late. So yeah, that's why it's a write-off. It's not a write-off. That's good. It's not. It's a write-off. <laughs> it's not a write-off. I'm happy for him. <laughs> I know you are, and I'm sad for us. Uh, but, oh, here's an actual good question he found. 